Good morning and welcome to Friday's action in Group C. We are going to start our 15 matches very soon. I'm Paul the Asset Nicholson and I will call all of your games in this morning as we go into Friday lunchtime and finalise who will go through to the Saturday finals with Matthew Dennant. Two players will go through through Group C and it will be three players going through in Group B a little bit later on. But before we start this morning, we'll give you a little recap as to what has happened so far this week. Let's have a little look at what happened in Group A. As you can see, Matthew Dennant seems like a long time ago now. He played 10 games in the two-day group on Tuesday and Wednesday, picked up eight wins after a seven-game winning streak. 16 points was good enough to make it through that group as the group winner, and he awaits in the finals for five other people. Two people will make their way through from Group C, but before we look at that, we'll have a little look at what happened in Group B last night as we finished up at around quarter to two in the morning. And one of the PDC greats, Andy Hamilton, had a very good night indeed. And by just one leg, he was able to usurp Paul Hogan at the top of the table with a last game win. Paul Hogan had a really good night last night, but Daryl Pilgrim in third position is currently in a spot to qualify but he will wonder how he walked away with only four points, considering the level of play he was showing. He was stunning at times last night, and the likes of Tian and Marsh have got a lot of work to do a little bit later on. As far as this group is concerned, it was an interesting day yesterday. We didn't see the greatest standard from all of the players, but there's still a lot of possibilities when it comes to Group C. Let's have a look and see what's happened so far. Five games per player. And it was Simon Stevenson for the second day in succession in two different groups where he picked up eight points. Josh Richardson also picked up eight points with Ryan Finesse and James Richardson in pursuit. But you think that maybe there is too much for Ryan Murray and Sam Kankett to do. We will see Sam Kankett in our first game of the day against Josh Richardson. And if Richardson does win Super that much. match, he will go top of the table provisionally after that first match. And also, Kankit will probably be eliminated. So without further ado, let's go down to the board to see our first two players. That's Josh Richardson. You can't miss him. He's got his face implanted on his shirt. But the 28-year-old from Pontypool in South Wales returns for another crack. Super Sam is his nickname, and he's going to have to be super good today if he stands any chance of getting through this group. Not only does Josh Richardson have his own hey, destiny in Sam his hands, to throw first. Game on. but he could confine not one but two players to elimination very early today. 60. As far as Josh's day is concerned, he will hope that he will improve incrementally but if he bags another eight points, 38. I think he's going to be safe. Four wins from a possible five. And a running average of 85.23 yesterday. Second in the 180s chart yesterday. One behind his dad, James Richardson. 115. But the one thing that sticks out for me from yesterday is that Josh... Having a checkered percentage of 27%, that must improve. He must be finding a minimum, in my opinion, of one in every three shots at double. 121, Samuel. 167. And not many people in the group yesterday were able to do that. In fact, only one player, and that is Simon Stevenson. That's why he's at the top of the table. 121. That's a very fine one, 40 there, 46. Josh. And Kankert was really good on double 16 yesterday. Game and he is again. Leg. That is a hot Sam start Kankett. from Sam. And considering how slowly he started yesterday, only winning one leg in his first two games, that will be a settler. Second leg is Josh to throw first. Game on. As for Sam's day yesterday... 
Only the two points. Fifty one. Just the one win. Which he picked up against Ryan Murray in match number eight. And he will play Ryan Murray again in that very same time slot. Sixty. Swap. But if he harbors any ambition of getting through this group in the top two spots, it's very simple. He can't lose a match. And he'll need Stevenson and Richardson to have an absolute nightmare today. 134. Running average just under 81 for the day yesterday for Sam. Unfortunately for him, his best average was just a shade under 84. So maybe after a day of finding his feet on debut, 26. he can go up a level on Friday and show us what he can really do. The checkered percentage was okay, just under 32%. But there's still room for improvement there. 129. <laughs> You can see he's holding those darts right at the end, and giving them an almighty flick before they're delivered. Nice lie. Stays on it for double ten. Game show the second. And there's a settler for Josh Richardson. Josh Richardson. A lovely ton check out with that beautiful first start. Just laying that next one onto it, and that double ten was perfectly pitched. So look at Sam to throw first. When you wake up in the morning and you're sitting 60. on eight points with one group day to go. You're thinking to yourself, get a good start. Win your first couple of games. Put yourself 60. in with a chance of going into the lunchtime play. And after beating Sam Kankit yesterday by four legs to one, quite a comfortable 100. win. 100. He'll feel good about this challenge. But he doesn't want to have to go down the route that... 77. Daryl Pilgrim was going down in the early hours of this morning. Averaging well, hitting lots of maximums. One having to fight for points because his opponents are starting to find something extra. Double session today, of course. Group B will conclude later on. 100. Always plenty of darts for you here, live on Sporty Stuff TV with the Online Darts Live League. Remember, you oh, can get in touch with us today at Darts Live League on Twitter. And we do have social channels on Instagram and Facebook as well. 100. And Both on finishes after 12. Kankit has the darts in this match, whereas Josh had them yesterday. Will that be a telling factor? 58. Josh record 164. Doesn't scare that one. Biggest finish yesterday in the group came from Richardson. 123. 145. Got to be the 42. Going for the bullseye there. It's a smaller 62. target. 62. Joshua required 41. So that's why a lot of people don't agree with that shot. But this is for a break of throw. For JR Jr. Game shot on the third leg. Very good Josh on the Richardson. checkouts. I said that his doubling had to improve. It doesn't get any better than 100% so far. Fourth leg, it's Josh to throw first. Game up. I actually quite like the ring of that GR Junior. I think I might just start calling him that. Although, <laughs> he may not like it. 39. This is a good display here from Josh. He's hitting the ground running. 140. There were some times yesterday where he looked a little bit hesitant. One so that's the first maximum of this match, and Kankit is definitely playing better early on this morning than he did yesterday. 
I'm not surprised to see that. One hundred and he's obviously got ability. Ball. But yesterday on debut, he was showing that playing here for the first time is not an easy thing to do. One hundred. Does your record ninety three? Even with that maximum in this leg, Richardson seems to have the making of a three one lead. Fifty three. This is a good performance from Josh, who has a personal best in this room of one hundred and twelve point two. The best personal best One of any player in 40. this group. First start missed at a double. Twenty. Tammy record eighty two. Can he cank it? Bring us level. Sixty two. Joshua Record 20. He genuinely thought that that was going to go. 50. This one should. 10. But doesn't. Sam, you require 20. What a let off, but can't get. Game show on the and four. He takes player. full advantage. Sam can't. Breaks straight back, and he does have the darts. In leg number five. So this could be one of those games where Josh, if he doesn't get a hold of it, he could get Sam away from to him. Throw first. Game on. Obviously frustrated at losing that leg. 82. Could have taken it in 13 darts and ends up losing it. 50. But somehow you have to put it out of your mind. 48. I was having a chat with Ryan Murray this morning and I was relaying to him something that Martin Adams said to me about this time last year about understanding the format that you're playing in. One of the beauties of playing in Group A is that you always get a second chance. 96. And Martin once said to me you don't have to play astonishingly well on Monday morning. That was when it was three days for Group A. 140. You have to play stunningly well on Friday. When it's your last chance, One hundred and thirty. do what Richie Burnett used to do. And that is play stunning on a Friday. We could be seeing that from Sam today. 82. Josh doesn't have to play stunning today. He just has to bag in my opinion, six points. That could be enough to make his way through. But I've been wrong before. Ninety nine. Samuel Rockwell, sixty three. That looks good for double twelve. Back to sixes. Fifty one. Josh Rockwell, one hundred and twenty four. This would solve everything from the last leg. It would make everything feel better. Bullseye. 99. A very, Sammy very tidy effort. 12. Game show on the Kanker fifth takes leg. the lead. Sam he's looking Kanker. to reverse the fixture score from yesterday, and he's looking way more comfortable on Friday morning than he did on Thursday. Sick leg, it's Josh to throw first. Game on. One hundred and forty. It is a game of missed chances here for Josh, that's for sure. He's had enough to win the match. By four legs to one. And that's exactly what he did yesterday against Sam in match fifteen. This is proving to be a lot harder. One hundred and forty. Even at the tender age of twenty four, he's got a lot of experience. Winning two different junior world championships within the JDC and the BDO World Youth Championship. Indeed, Sam oh, Kankis was a very good youth player. He played for his country at a very young age. 100. I'm not talking Does about a junior level, I'm talking about senior level. A 
the player here, he, he doesn't really want to go for the 16s. He wants to go for that treble 20. One. And that hundred. was a stunning shot. With those two darts in the way, I didn't think he could hit that. 100. Joshua required 28. To take us all the way in match one. James yeah, on the lovely leg play. from Josh. Josh Richardson. Protects his throw really well in 14 darts, which is the best leg of this match so far. So good signs if Josh can possibly break in the last Seven leg. Seven final leg against Sam points. to throw first. But Sam Kanker does not want that to happen because he knows he'll be going back to Ponty Pool. 58. He loses this game. He probably thinks that 60. he can't qualify from sixth position in the table anyway. But what he wants to do is put in a display uh, today three. that warrants another invitation to come back. One hundred. There are so many opportunities available for people who can play well here. It doesn't have to happen on your first invitation here. 97. But there are more players wanting to play here than ever before. When you start putting up £2,000 bonuses for a weekly win and £6,000 for a Champions League win, it grabs people's attention. That wild dart means that Richardson gets six starts from here to win this close match by four legs to three. Yeah, I like that play. Guarantees himself a single to double combination. 91. Can he take 56. this out clinically to get two more points to go to the top of the table above Simon Stevenson for now? Double 16. Good it's almost shot on the like match. he meant to do that. Josh Richardson. That's a really good finish to the match for Josh Richardson. He was tested very well. 95.8 is the average. And the checkout's a little bit better than yesterday. The highest checkout came in the very first leg. But that is a statement to the rest of the field with a mid-90s average in game number one. So he does go top of the table. The person he's just jumped is Simon Stevenson. And he's going to be up against Ryan Murray who's in a very similar position to Sam Kankett at the bottom of the table. That's coming up after this.
and welcome back to Sporty Stuff TV's coverage of the Online Darts Live League for Friday in Group C. Contrasting fortunes for these next two players over the last few days, but let's what see. Let's see what happens for the likes of Ryan Murray and Simon Stevenson going into the early portion of their day today. 34-year-old from Edinburgh comes back, possibly for just one more day before the long drive back to Scotland. But Simon Stevenson, over the last couple of days, has been Mr. Consistency after what he would classify as an unlucky Game day on Tuesday. It's Ryan to throw first. Game on. No points. No wins on Tuesday. But he did play at a pretty good level. 140. And then he came back on Wednesday and put things right. He did remain in the bottom half of the table in Group A. But yesterday, 46. he carried on his run of form by getting eight points. He was on for the perfect day. But he ended up losing to Ryan Murray in his final game of the day. So he's looking for revenge in game one of his schedule for Friday. He's one of the favourites to come through this group. 72. He's no longer on the top of the table. Josh Richardson has overtaken him by two points. But Stevenson still has the better leg difference. Fifty-five. Ronnie Good start here from Murray. Forty-three. Maybe he's looking for just a I better day today. Up. Pick up maybe six points, win more than you lose, and just cause a bit of problems for the people who may qualify. Because from the bottom of the table, sixty. Ryan, you record where 56. Ryan is very close to. It's highly unlikely he's going to get through with 12 points, even if he wins every match. 36. If Stevenson does start slow, he will be hoping he's not going to have a day like Tuesday. 84. Ryan, you record 20. He can't be defensive today. You've got to go after those points. Double five. Ten. Murray doesn't really scare it. So Stevenson's still in this leg. One hundred. Ronnie record Finally ten. Gets himself to a finish. Game shown the first. But Murray day. does take the first Brian leg in Murray. twenty darts. He hasn't played his premium stuff this week, but he doesn't have any time. To find his so feet today, he's got to hit the ground running. As for the stats for Simon yesterday, a running average of 85.96 was good 45. enough for those four wins. Three maximums. Three ton plus checkouts as well, including his best one, which was 124. Nine. One of the best legs of the day, the 13 darter. In fact, only bettered by James Richardson, who had a 12. 140. But the best statistic on his sheet yesterday, checkout percentage, 45.24. That's 100. really good. And considering how he's played in the Live League previously in 2022, that's an 99. improvement of about 10%. On his overall checkout stats. 60. This has been Ryan's first week here. He made his debut on Tuesday. Got four points on Tuesday. But since then, things have not gone his way. Eight. He's played 15 games. Won four of them in total. The win percentage is under 30%. And the running 60. average is under 84 as well, which for him is not where it wants to be. In fact, his best average this week was a losing average of 98.09. 119. 
That's good stuff from Stevenson. Why do I get the feeling that today we're going to have a lot of tight matches? 80. That's unlucky. Simon requiring 40. Now we're looking to leave 167 there and comes up just short. No score. That's an interesting play there. And one that I really do agree with. You don't want to be leaving five. You'd rather go back to tops with three darts in hand. That's very smart. 92. For Plymouth so I mean, we're going 40. Twenty. But it doesn't work out. And Ryan Murray can double his lead here. Somewhat unexpectedly. Forty-four. He's not showing it. So but inside he'll be writhing, thinking that was a chance missed. Game shown the second leg. That Simon is not Stevenson. a chance missed. It's not a classic leg by any means. But the fact of the matter is, it is one-one now. He has every chance to kick in from here. So look, it's Ryan to throw first. Game on. Ryan Murray has had the best leg of the week. We saw quite a few opportunities last Four, night. Three. For people to get ten daughters. But Ryan still has the only ten daughter of the week. Which, when you consider we haven't had a nine daughter this year, it's still the best leg of the year. If that remains the case, at least Ryan can say that to himself. 134. If you look at Ryan's stats from yesterday, he was the only person who averaged under 80 for the entire day. That will not please him. One hundred and four maximums and one solitary ton plus check out of 116. There were some good legs in there. 140. But he would admit there weren't enough of them. This week, he might just have to chalk it up to experience. 97. A hopeful return, and I'm sure he would play better than he has this week. Fifty-two. Ryan, require one hundred and two. That's a somewhat fortunate last dart there. Leaves him a very manageable out if he gets the opportunity. And he does get a look now. The reason I say that so I mean, is because this combination involves a single. Whereas 131, for instance, does not. 47. Ryan, you're recording 40. Tops for 2-1. Back to fives. 30. Simon, you require 83. Both struggling in this one. It can't be denied. Now what does Stevenson do here? 43. Chose not to go for two Ryan, you require tops. 10. Beautiful guide. No score. Maybe Simon, that's what's been going 40. wrong this week. Just constantly knocking on the door and nobody's there. Game shot the third and Simon Stevenson, the Simon ultimate Stevenson. opportunist. So many times this week, people have failed to take a leg like that, and he's in there to swoop. But we'll get Simon to throw first. Game on. There is the possibility that Richardson, Josh Richardson, of course, 99. and Simon Stevenson, if they continue to win early in today's Games, they could find themselves with an, an un saleable gap. Indeed, if Stevenson does win this match, he will be on 10 points again. 67. And both Ryan Finesse and James Richardson, who play each other in match three, are chasing and hoping for mistakes already. One 180. But we do get a maximum from Ryan Murray. That's his first of the day. 100. Things are warming up a little bit now. 
just get the feeling that maybe when Ryan Murray plays a little bit quicker. He's playing a little bit better. 59. Ryan, you're recording 100. You have to work your way into that rhythm. You can't just do it straight away. Especially if you're not a really rapid player. 59. Stevenson may smell another opportunity here. A chance to leave double 18. 100. Or on your record, 96. Needs a treble or a double. Gets the first one. Game show on the and fourth. Also gets the double eight. Ryan Murray. That's as good a three darts as he's thrown all day long so far. And I'm including that 180 that he found in that leg. That was much more like it's Ryan to throw first. Game on. The averages are still in the mid 70s. 45. But when you're involved in a match like this, you already think it's not a great game standard wise. It's not about the average. It's about getting across the line and getting the points. 45. And the points are so much more important for Simon Stevenson. 30. Ryan understands that if he doesn't win this match, he's not going to be making the finals on Saturday night. But even if he does 100. get 10 points today from a possible 10, that still might not be enough. That's the problem with having a, a bad day on day one. Aye, two, one. I distinctly remember playing during lockdown in 2020. 60. When we created this project. And we used to play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. 65. And our league table was over six days. And then you would have Sunday off. Boy, did we sleep well on those Sundays. I look back at that now, oh, and I don't understand how we did it. But we provided a lot of entertainment for a lot of people who were stuck in their houses, and... 45. We were very grateful to have that opportunity to play against each other via online means. 100. Very grateful for this project in giving us that through a very tough time. 135. It's worked out pretty well for Ryan. A treble five still gets him to a two data. It's a six. Ronnie Rockwell, 100. Double top for 3 2. Game show on the Things are fifth starting there. to click, aren't they? Ryan Murray. Two consecutive finishes now of 96 and 100. And all of a sudden, he's starting to find that treble 20 bet a bit more often. Six wickets, Simon to throw first. Game on. Stevenson's leg difference in the table is plus nine. 45. Josh Richardson's is plus 5. So he has a little buffer there. It's not a great deal of difference. 100. But if Ryan Murray and Sam Kankad are not going to qualify, which I don't think they are. What 39. they can do is throw a spanner in the works for other people. An almighty thud as 28 grams of tungsten hit the deck. Fifth One of the heavier five. darts I've seen on the circuit, actually. It's almost as if heavier darts are getting more fashionable again. 43. Oh, 174. glorious 174. He is definitely in the driving seat now. Stevenson just isn't finding a consistent range of 160 like he has the last couple of days. And this looks like a jam that he's not going to get out of. 
76. And he's left to finish. He's already completed in this match. And not that long ago. 66. So could it be a second 96. win in this group? To put distance between himself and Sam Kankett at the bottom. 60. He will remain the favourite for the match, even not taking that check out of 96. I think Simon Stevenson 50. sees the writing Ryan on the wall. 36. Double 18. 18. It's not over yet. I mean, you record 158. It might be next door. 98. This to turn into one of those Ryan matches where multiple 18. match darts are missed. 18. But that's Nine. six darts for the match so missed. And Stevenson somehow is still alive. Game He's the very much play. alive. Simon Stevenson. And one of the tales of the tape this week has been Simon Stevenson finding a way. He didn't expect to win that leg, but now he can make the most of it. Seventh and final leg, it's Ryan to throw first. Game on. Simon is thinking right now, and I'm just guessing, but it's a very educated guess. How on earth... Am I still in hey, this match? Hey, two one. Just goes to show that no matter how well you play, legs Nine, are not given to eight. you. You have to get over the line. You have to hit that final double. It's always the hardest one to hit. Fifty-nine. If you were to ask me, the two hardest doubles to hit. One is the first one of the day, and the other one is the first match-winning double of the day. Because after you've hit those two, everything else seems a little easier. 100. These two have not played... Live League darts until 2022. 140. So they don't have the same experience levels of Orion Finesse or James Richardson particularly because he's now played 270 games. 97. So I mean, you record 127. Stevenson has found his scoring form in this leg just at the right time. 34. Not at that visit though. I only record 164. Sixty. And we so see a ninety-three checkout here from Stevenson. It would be his biggest checkout of the match. In fact, his biggest has been that sixty checkout. Double seven. Game and he shot finds the, the match. win, which Simon eliminates Stevenson. Ryan Murray from the possibility of coming through this group. So he, like Sam Kankett. Has to be just a spoiler for the rest of the day. The averages, both 75. They didn't play their best. But look at the checkered percentage for Simon Stevenson. 44%. That's the most impressive statistic on that sheet. But six match darts to win by four legs to two. Missed by Ryan Murray. He will be devastated about that. James Richardson and Ryan Finesse have got a lot of work to do to cash, uh, catch Josh Richardson and... Simon Stevenson, so over to them for match three. That's coming right up after this.
and welcome back to Group C action here at the Online Darts Live League. I'm Paul the Asset Nicholson. We've got two matches that have already gone all the way to four Not legs three. to three. What will happen as we close out round one here with Ryan Finesse and James Richardson? They have a big task on their hands, as you can see. Stevenson and Josh, four points ahead of the chasing pack, of which this is all of it. Yeah, Ryan Murray and Kankit are eliminated now. Game They're on. not going to get to the top two spots. So over to you, James. And over to you, Ryan. 100. See what you can do about that gap of four points now. Only one of them can get two four. points here. And if it is to be James Richardson, that four-point gap for the top two players will remain. Which makes the likes of Josh Richardson against Finesse in round two a hugely important match. And Ryan Finesse against Simon Stevenson one in round number three. Hugely important. We don't have to wait long for our first 180. 120 points. A lot of urgency in this game. There's a lot of pace, urgency, and a bit of tension as well. Because these two still believe they can make it through in the top two spots. 100. It's plausible. But if Josh Richardson and Simon Stevenson remain in those top two spots, they will have a shootout to see who wins the group in match 15. But that's a long way off. 17. James, you require 100. fallout of the board there for Ryan. He will remain... 60. The marginal favourite for Ryan this leg. 70. Sitting on 70. Double top. 50. Not meant to be. And Richardson does get an opportunity now to hold his own through in leg one. 5 that's what he does. Leg. James and Richardson. Similarly to his son, he starts his day with a 100 checkout. So, like father, like son, or should I say, like son, like father? Second leg is Ryan to throw first. Game on. James's day yesterday could be classified as okay. We judge him by very high standards. An 88.5 average for the day. He did have the best average of the day overall, but unfortunately, the 103.33 that he registered was a losing average against Josh. He, like quite a few other people who played in Group C yesterday, did not perform well on the outer ring. And at times, 100. James was left bereft at how many doubles he missed, particularly when he played Ryan yesterday. 60. Only 7% of doubles were hit against Ryan Finesse yesterday for James, and he was left thinking that he wouldn't 60. hit a double with a hedgehog being thrown at the board. Not that we condone uh, that kind of behaviour here at the Online Darts Live League, just to be clear. One hundred and five. Good stuff there from Ryan to leave two daughter after twelve. Sixty. James had two ton plus outs yesterday, including a best of one hundred and twenty. And even he can't take out two hundred in three darts. Eighty. Now that he has the chance to shrink that score, he'll be hoping that Ryan's going to have the same kind of game. On doubles that James had yesterday. Sixty. Ryan, you require sixteen. Double eight. To level this game up at one leg all. Bed is completely covered apart from going through the posts. 
game show which the is second exactly match. what he's just done Ryan Furness you have to know how your darts behave and that was a really fine single dart right through the posts and he hits the back of the net but I guess James to throw first game on One hundred. If Finesse was to get the points in this match and go to eight points, two 60. behind the two at the top, James would be six points adrift with only four matches left. Sixty. Which would equate to eight points available. Things are pretty urgent for James. And if you consider his pedigree here at the Lively, league, him not getting through to finals this week would be an upset. Especially when considering his six. form. It's not like he's been playing poorly lately. He's won a WDF silver ranking event recently. 93. One hundred. That's what he's got to do. He's got to steady the ship, stay straight, and let his arm find the weight of the dart. And when he finds that first dart, he can start 60. to be aggressive. But too often so far today, he's not finding 58. that 60 with the first arrow. It's on your record, 148. It's such an important thing for his game. Stay on the 60 again. 100. Games you've 150. So it is advantage finesse. And it remains the case. 57. Ryan, you've 48. Double top. Game show on the third. Finesse is starting to get Ryan more lethal finesse. on the outer ring. That's a really good clean checkout. And good for him because James was sitting candidly on that 100 well, to get a second to ton plus check out of, the game of this game. Let's have a glance at what Ryan's done the last Aye, 24 one. hours then. In a strange sort of way, it was a good day for Ryan. Six points from a possible 10. Aye, two, one. Didn't average well. But it's a bit misleading because he had some good games in there and a, a couple of shockers which brought his overall average 60. down. His average of 83.08 for the day is slightly misleading. He had four maximums. 41. James Richardson was the biggest 180 hitter of yesterday, getting seven. But the checkouts were steady at around 32%. And he only 100. had one ton plus checkout of 118 Best leg being 14 darts, of which he got two of them. 100. He's had a good, lively career so far. He's played 66 games and won 56% 60. of them. He may not be a household name yet, but coming here, 55. he's not taken for granted as someone who you can flog. He's actually got an overall career record here as an average of 88, which is very, very tidy. 140. That's a nice play there from Ryan. He didn't want to go for that treble 20 there, just in case he was displacing any of those darts that were already there. So the big 20 leaves that two darter. 64. Ryan, you're recording 60. Double top for 3 1. Game shot on the floor. I said player. he was getting crisp on Ryan those doubles. Finance. That was a lovely hold of throw with 60 points and two darts. And you're doing that all the time. You're putting pressure I on your opponents. James to throw and the pressure's just getting worse for James. He lost to Finesse yesterday 60. by four legs to two. And that visit right there signifies why he's so frustrated. 
Three darts delivered well, and nothing finding the lipstick. Aye, T5. Aye, T1. If you think about how things went in Group A for James, it was equally frustrating. 59. He didn't find his top level at all. He'll have been hoping that his top 58. level was going to be found on Friday morning. So far, not the case, I'm afraid. He finished in fifth position in Group A come Tuesday and Wednesday. Aye, T5. And it's still down to those doubles. He was only hitting one of every four. 140. The scoring was fine. The, the average was fine. The 180s were okay. He got into double figures over the first couple of days. But something hasn't been working. 130. And he's being put to the sword by a lot of his opponents. 60. Brian, you reckon 140. Does Finesse have the capability of putting this away right here? Oh, possibly. 102. Gang Very one close to being one of the biggest outs of the week. Double 16. 70. And that's what's been going wrong. Brian, you require That 40. double 16 bed has not cooperated. Game well, double shot top does cooperate for Ryan Finesse. Ryan Finesse. And he gets a second win over James Richardson in the space of about 21 hours. So 87.71 is really good for Ryan. Unfortunately for James, that's well below his best. He did have his best check out of the match in the very first leg. But after that, it was all Ryan who does get himself within two points of the top two positions. That is round one completed for our Group C action. We'll take a short break now, but when we come back, it's going to be Simon Stevenson against Sam Kankett. So over to you again, Simon, just trying to keep the pressure on the other two people in the chasing pack.
Hello and welcome back to round two of our matches here in Group C for the Online Darts Live League on Friday. And with Sam Kankett of Wales and Ryan Murray from Scotland eliminated now from the possibility of getting through this group, they will act as spoilers for the likes of Simon Stevenson and Sam Kankett has an opportunity right now to do just that. That result for Ryan Finesse against James Richardson has opened up a sizable gap between the top two and fourth position. So Ryan Finesse now seems to be the danger man. But if Stevenson finds a 12th point here... Okay, first look at Simon to throw first. Game on. He is very much in the driving seat. He may still be wondering how... He won his first game today. 45. Because I am. There is no way he should have beaten Ryan Murray. Two clean visits. 40. And things like double 18 and double 9. And Ryan was not able to put Simon away. But if I had a pound this week for the amount of times oh, that I'm Simon Stevenson won a game that he maybe shouldn't have, I'd have enough for a happy meal which is a few quid 60 but the only person who's happy right now is Simon because he's getting ever closer to another finals night on Saturday 41 he's never made a champions week so maybe that's the ambition this week get through to a fortnight's time Come back and have a crack at that £6,000. But before we even get there, he could be having a crack at £2,000, which is the weekly bonus on offer on Saturday night. 140. In order to have a crack at that, you have to be there. And he's getting ever so close. And from this position in the table, he does not want to be denied. 97. Both of these guys were involved in four three score lines in their first game today. 42. Sammy Rick, 170. Can't get on the end of a defeat. Almost gives himself a shot at a 170 out, which would Sammy be his biggest finish by quite some distance. Chevrolet 18 leads double 12. It's in, Simon. One hundred and fourteen. This time Samuel gives it way too much air. Double twelve for Sam. Game and that's a the super checkout from Sam. Sam, you could say that Super Sam gets a super checkout, but he's got to get another three legs if he wants more points. Second, I get Sam to throw first. Game on. The only win that Sam has banked over the last day and a bit was against Ryan Murray by four legs to one. But he hasn't four been able to get out of that low to mid-80s range in an average. He hasn't gone to that next level where you put in something like 90 to 95, which is where you when have to be off. to be seriously competitive in a week like this. You know for a fact that when you get to Saturday night, Matthew One Dennett is going to average somewhere between 90 and 95 all of the time. One hundred. He's not noted as one of those players who goes in and puts in the 107s to 112s. In fact, his personal best here at the Live League does reflect 57. that. 101.9 is his best. One hundred. Steady operator. He wears you down. Ninety six.
squeeze between the two for the turn. 60. He just comes up short. You can see that right shoulder just collapsed at the end. Nine, two, six. It seems to be using the cover shots a little bit more for now. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But I have to 60. say, he looks way more relaxed Damn, today than he did yesterday. He seems like a pretty relaxed chap. Not everybody has an entitlement to feel nervous on their debut. Double 18. Game on the second That is his best checkout of the week so far. In fact, it's only his second ton plus checkout of the week. The other one being a straight ton. I said he could be a spoiler. To throw first. Game it's proving on. to be the case. Twenty-five. Simon really doesn't need this result, the way it's going. Fool. But let, let me remind you, what pressure is on Sam right now? What pressure is on Ryan Murray? They've got none. They can just play. Yeah, Whereas Stevenson, Furness, and Josh Richardson are all vying for those top two spots. And they're going to be jostling for that over the next three or four seven. hours. Let them shoulder the pressure. You just go up there and play. 96. And Matthew Dennett was saying to me on Wednesday when the pressure was off him, he felt like he could play properly. 134. And it's Kankin who's playing properly here. This is much more like it. 136. He's getting closer to that level of around 90. He's not quite there yet. But this is getting him there. Stunning dart. Where has this been the last day and a bit? Really good to see. 135. This is turning out to be a decent Samuel result for James 16. Richardson. Game's on the it's third. It's three nil to Kankit. Sam Kankit. And I didn't see this coming at all, but maybe when you think about the amount of pressure that's on him, he can just be free rolling for the rest of the day. Four flick it's Sam to throw first. And I'm not Game getting on. ahead of myself because at times this week I've seen people three nil up and they've lost four three. That is not 59. in the mind of Sam right now, believe me. All he wants to do is get a little bit of vengeance for losing 4-1 to Simon yesterday in what was... 100. And I don't mean this disrespectfully. It was a pretty atrocious game. One. it was also a game where Sam only had 14% on doubles. Much improved here. He's at 60%. Aye, tier one. Simon himself's only had one shot to finish a leg. It was that shot at double 12 for the 138. And it was a good inch away. This is what we haven't been seeing from Sam. This steady player, which is 60. what I would categorize 87 and a half as being. Around 17 darts per leg. For me, this is what you've got to be doing all Aye, the time. Five. If not, slightly better. If you are going to contend. Stevenson has been like a cat this week. 140. He's had a lot of lives. Just how many does he have left? Trust me, he's already one used one today. So I'm going to require 120. Against Ryan Murray. Tops for a 120. Game show <laughs> on the four flare. What do Simon I know about Stevenson. darts? He could well do it again, you know. It's a strange old sport. But what is it about Simon Stevenson when he goes vastly behind? Get Simon to throw first. Game on. And at that point, he starts to switch on. Sixty. 
Is the pressure relieved from him in that spot? And is the pressure back on Sam to get the result? When's he not? It's a bit like in football if you go 3-0 up. You take your foot off the pedal and you think, well, we've done all the hard work, we're going to win the game. Oh, and then the other cool. team start playing football. It's a bit more lavish, a bit less pressure. They find themselves getting one goal. One and then hundred. They manage to get another and all of a sudden there's a bit of pressure on the opponent. I remember a famous Newcastle versus Arsenal game where we were 4 0 behind, one I believe. 100. And we ended up getting a 4 4 draw with one of the goals of the season from the late great Czech Tiote. 77. That was a good day at St. James's Park. Fifty-five. Still advantage Stevenson here in leg five. Fifty-five. And it will remain the case. I have genuinely lost count this week of how many times we could have had a 4-0. And it's turned into a 4-3 of some sort. It's almost like some of these players are afraid to win by big margins. 100. So I'm going to record 63. I'll travel 13. I'll give him a shot at double 12. But he's decided on the treble 9. Interesting play. 23. Damn you, record 100. Treble 9 would have left double 18. Went for the 14 and tops. And Sam was going... For the wrong cross route on the 140. The 618s and 32. Game but it's now 3 back. 2, and Stevenson's Simon not going to give up. I tell you one thing, it's happening again. Stevenson might win 4 3 from here. See if I get Sam to throw first. And that first start's starting to drop. 131. When you recover like that, you don't mind. One hundred and eighty. If he wins this game by four legs to three, I'm not going to call him the Mirror Man ever again. I'm going to call him the Comeback King. One hundred. Or something to that effect. He's not missing. You're looking at a player who was beating Raymond van Barneveld in the UK Open. He has made the final eight. Of that tournament as well. 100. I've spoken to many a player about Simon over the, the course of time. And they've all said. How has this guy not won more? 137. Time you record. Kanka does get a shot. To win the match right here. But Stevenson. Look at him. 44 after 9. 134. And he has to hit it. Fair play to Sam who's left double 18 after 12. Well, that's a great treble. 12. And he may pay the price for those misses. And he required 36. He may have run out of lives. Oh, double 16 for Kankit. Go and we know shot he loves the match. double 16. Sam he Kankit. did deserve the win, didn't he? But you have to say, Stevenson missed his opportunity of taking us all the way. It ended up being a really good game, actually. 88.4 for Simon. His average kept creeping up as the game went on. But Kankit gets his best performance of the last couple of days with 57% on the doubles and a high checkout for himself over the last couple of days as well. Well done, Sam. You are a spoiler. And Josh Richardson, he's going to kiss you on the lips when you get back to the practice room, I'm sure. Next, it's going to be Josh Richardson against Ryan Finesse. A really important game for points in this table. That'll be right after this.
things could be about to get very interesting here in Group C. Because if Ryan Finesse comes back to the hockey now and takes on Josh Richardson and is successful, we could have three players on ten points. There you see a spanner in the works. Thanks to Sam Kankert, who's just beaten Simon Stevenson. But Finesse now has his destiny in his own hands. He could, with the right result here, go top. But then Ryan Murray and James Richardson will follow this and hopefully get a little bit closer. But if Ryan can be successful here against Josh, he may be the man to beat. Yeah, he feels like it's Josh to throw first. Game on. And when Ryan woke up this morning, he was thinking about a set of matches going his way, including getting a first win of the day against oh, Josh's G6. father. That has happened. Now he has to do a double over the Richardsons to put himself in the box seat. 59. That performance against James was pretty good. 87 average, one of every three doubles hit. There was some one good critical 100. stuff in there. But the same could be said for Josh, who has had the performance of the day so far in beating Sam Kankett by four legs to three. That's just proven to be a better win than we thought it possibly could be because of what Sam has just done. I have a feeling. Aye, it's in on. I'm not going to say tonight's going to be a good night. But tonight is going to be a good night in Group B. But I have a feeling that this one could go to the wire. 140. Ryan Finesse will finish his campaign against Ryan Murray in match 14. He will play Sam Kankin in game 10. Oh, in G6. And he has Simon Stevenson after this game in round three. Maybe it's a good thing for Finesse. 120. That he's got all of his rivals early. Double top. 100. He's not able to do what Stevenson did 40. against Finesse. A little bit earlier in this campaign. Game Double 10 is found day. and Finesse gets Ryan an early Finesse. break of throw. He is pacing himself really well by the looks of it. And he looks ready to strike at the right time. Second gets Ryan to throw first. Game on. One there have been times when Finesse has been in this room and he's been dominant. This could be another one of those days. If he stays around that 88 average level all day long, you know he's going to cause problems for players at points. But if he finds a personal best style performance at times oh, against the right opponent, he's going to do himself a lot of favours. I was having a chat with Ryan this morning. He's actually very, very nice to talk to. Very intelligent. And I said that I referenced the Salisbury poisonings in yesterday's coverage because he is from Salisbury. And he said that when that happened, he was actually in the vicinity of it. He was maybe 10 minutes away from where it happened. 39. Well, we, are, we are very grateful that you're here and healthy, Ryan. I wouldn't have liked you have been in that situation, that's for sure. 95. He's looking to double down here. And he's playing at a swift pace as well, which really does suit him. 100, Ryan, you're going 70. He's fast becoming the favourite to win this group, based on the way he's playing right now. 50. He'll be back. One hundred and five. Nice thinking there from Josh. 20. To leave that two data. 
but Aiden it means on the nothing. Second leg. As Finesse Brian backs Finesse. up that break of throw from leg one to take a 2 0 lead. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but maybe it's time for somebody to dominate an so opponent. It's Josh to throw first. We thought that was happening with Kanker when he went 3 0 up against Stevenson. We were wrong. Josh wants me to be wrong right now. He wants to mount a fight back from here. Sixty. Now, whatever you're doing this weekend, just remember that we do have finals on Saturday night. And we will be live on Sporty Stuff TV from 10 p.m. Tomorrow night, and we do have the conclusion of Group B tonight as well from the same time. Forty-four. So whatever you're doing, you can take us with you via your smart devices. Sixty-four. You don't have to miss a trick. Just remember as well, if you are choosing to have. A little gamble on some of the outcomes of these games, whether it's most 180s, amount of legs played per game, or indeed the outcome of the match. 100. Please gamble responsibly. We can't emphasize that enough. It's for over 18s only, and begambleaware.org for more information. 80. I will be live on Sporty Stuff TV tonight, just before 8.30, with some picks for tonight's group. So stay tuned for that if you have the opportunity. Richardson with his second attempt at a 120 in this match. One second time running, he finds the single 20 instead of tops. But he will come back this time. Under pressure. The most pressure. 37. Joshua Rickwine, 20. This has got to be hit. Aims on the third well leg. done, Josh. Josh you Richardson. didn't want to surrender your throw for the second time in this match because I know there's been Bridges Gap this week, but I don't think there was a way back from that. Well, look, it's Ryan to throw first. Game on. 45. I may have just said Bridges Gap. I meant to say Gap's Bridged. It's been a long week. Cut me a break. 60. One of the things about playing this much in the way of darts as well is that it saps your mental endurance. 100. There may be times in these long days where your mind goes to sleep and you forget about doing everything that's right on the hockey. 40. And you just go into autopilot mode. I've been there many times. You might start a match with everything in your mind correctly, but if you go to sleep for 58. five or six minutes and everything goes autopilot, you can find yourself 3-0 or 3-1 down in a heartbeat. 22. I myself don't remember a great deal of the games that I played in 2020 in the Live League. There were that many of them. Nine, there were a couple two, two. that stood out. I particularly remember the ones I lost more than the ones I've won. That's just how dark players operate. One hundred and eighty. Back in the leg with that maximum, the first of the match. One hundred. Problem is, Ryan's already on a finish. With Josh not on 199. 89. Uh, the conclusion of this game, it will be one third of our action already finished. With 10 matches to go. 41. Ooh, that's a slip. 110. If he does come back, it just makes things a bit more difficult. 518s. Would have given him leg four. 54. Ronnie Rockwell, 65. Double top. 
for a vital hold of throw. Twenty five. It's not there. Josh Vercoin, fifty six. Nobody is having it all their own way so far today, apart from finesse against JR Senior. Double nine. 38. And he might still get the 3 1. Ryan, you require 40. Was that a change of tactic there from Josh? We'll go for double 18 instead of tops. 20. He will despise that Josh effort. Require it was a bit 18. ragged. Too high twice. And the third one arm was obviously a little tight. He's going to split it. Ooh, six double six. Old Age school. On the four flag. Josh Richardson. That's the kind of thing I used to do on 18. I used to love double six straight down the pipe. But it is 2-2. Two, two. And Ryan Finesse has got issues now. Fifth leg is Josh to throw first. Game on. And by that I mean issues because he doesn't have the darts anymore. Aye, 2-1. 81 average for Josh, 84 for Finesse. We have seen better darts today from some players. 31. But it seems to me like Ryan is starting to fall away from the quality wagon here a little bit. Starting to stray into the treble five. 56. And losing the line a little bit on that requisite treble that he's looking for. That's better. That's where he wants to be. 100. When they played yesterday, it was four legs to three to Josh. And the averages are both in the low 80s. So it's following the same pattern again. 60. The doubles were very similar too. The percentages of 21% for Ryan and 26 for Josh. 100. Reflect a somewhat scrappy game. One hundred. Can he leave the big fish? Aye, too far. There's a no. I do believe it was the great Rod Stud that came up with the big fish, which is now a commonplace name for the 170 checkout. 41. I distinctly don't remember anybody else calling it something like that Ooh, before. 43. Rod got his teeth into it. One of the greats of the commentary game in our sport. We're lucky to have him. And he did a great job last night when Michael van Gerwen was playing against Gerwin Price in that spectacular Sheffield final. 56. Which was won by the Welsh. On 142. He had a crack at this earlier in the day and missed tops for it. 60. Joshua require one. Definitely lost the weight of the dart on that 60. This has been the scrappiest leg of the match. Maybe a sign of just how important it is. Chance for finesse to break in seven visits. Ryan require 82. This is a superb chance. Double top. 42. Josh has got away with one. Josh and remember, he was 2 0 down. He could be 3 2 up. No and he score. isn't 3 2 up. He could Ryan well be 3 2 40. down now in a topsy turvy match. Game show on the That's fifth. That's exactly play. the case. Ryan Finesse. At no point did Ryan Finesse think that he was going to be breaking Josh's throw in 22 darts. But that's exactly what's just happened. So you play against Ryan to throw first. Game on. 
Now, if he can kick on at the start of this leg, he will get very close One to the top of the table. Simon Stevenson's leg difference is plus eight right now with 10 points in the bank. 66. Finesse, with a win in this leg, would join Stevenson on 10 points and plus eight as well. They would be dead level. 58. With only legs one separating them potentially. I'm not even looking at that statistic yet. I only look at it if I have to at the end of the group. 58. It's looking good. One hundred. steady. He's forcing Richardson into finding two treble twenties. Trebles that aren't being found. Twenty-eight. And as each visit passes, this tall lad from Solvery One hundred. is getting closer and closer and closer to making this a three-horse race. What I also have to say at this point is that James Richardson now One is in dire need 180, Ryan, 143. of a miracle. Because if Finesse does get the 10 points, it's a six-point gap to both Kankett and Richardson. 62. And I don't think that gap is going to be bridged at all. It will be a three-horse race. One hundred and thirty-three. Yeah, I like that. One Great 81. approach there from Josh. But it is a match start. Two, in fact, a double twelve. Game shot and a clinical match. finish. Ryan so we Bennett. do have a three-horse race for the two spots available in Group C. A beautiful eighty-one, just the way you like it, with a little bit of monkey's blood on the top. If you like that sort of thing in your ice cream. 78.8 for Josh, 81.83 for Ryan. A very similar game to yesterday. But ultimately, the chances were taken by Ryan early. And that fifth leg, that break of throw, was enormous to give him the chance of getting towards the top of the table. Next, we're going to close out round number two. And it's two players in the bottom half in James Richardson and Ryan Murray coming up next.
now turn our attention to the bottom half of our Group C table. It's not going to be a good week for Ryan Murray or for James Richardson. But there are two points on offer here as James Richardson just clings on to some very, very small hope of getting through this group. What he needs is a miracle. He's got four games left. He must win all four and he needs every single game to go his way. But if this game is tight, and even if he wins it tight, I don't think it's yeah, going to be good enough. Ryan to throw first. He will not think Game he's off. getting through this group. It's only a matter of time before he is mathematically eliminated. Because in the next match, 70. we have Ryan Finesse against Simon Stevenson, and one of those guys is going to 12 points. One hundred and eighty. Is this the time where Richardson goes a little ballistic? Fifty. Let's face it. There's no pressure on Richardson. He's not expected to get through the group here. And Ryan Murray is not going to. Ninety-seven. Oh, what is it they say in Scottish? Coming down the road. 101. And that will be happening in the next few hours as he will get home to see the family by later on tonight. 51. Oh, that was a lazy dart from James. He was going for the 14 section to leave 170. This game's oh, been played at quite a pace, isn't it? <coughs> 97. One of the days from about six months ago where Connor Scott was in this room. 133. He was running yeah, around the room trying to get the fastest game possible. Problem is, at the same time, he was averaging at about 105. 36. Twice this week, James Richardson 50. has hit a double top from that angle. Double 16 for Murray. 34. Chance missed. Thank you for 40. Not the first time I've said that about Ryan this week, unfortunately. James on the first Richardson leg. does get a break James in leg Richardson. one. A really good leg of 16 darts. And if he can maintain that 94 average throughout this game, that should be good enough. Second against James to throw first. Game on. One hundred. Knowing James as I do, even though he's not going to make the finals by the looks of it, he's probably got a backup hey, plan for this weekend of a local tournament. Indeed, I heard after there was some pro tour action this week in Wigan. One hundred and eighty. You see the second maximum of this match from James already. A certain friend of the live league, Simon 140. Whitlock. One hundred and forty. He left the pro tour venue on Wednesday and ended up playing local league darts on Wednesday when he got back. That's commitment. Sixty. That's just pure enjoyment of the game. 100. James Rock, 161. This is a good performance so far from James. 65. You never know, though. He might go 4 0, 4 0, 4 0, 4 0 from here and cause loads of issues. 60. James and he wouldn't be home, 96. James. If that happened, potentially. 38. That second dot was a bit scruffy. Must have come out of his hand incorrectly. Maybe that's what that ghost dart was about when he was walking back to the 40. edge of James the exclusion zone. 58. Double top. James on the second yeah, Nothing left. wrong with his doubling. James Richardson. Yeah, he's finding himself... Two shots from a possible three, so that's really, really good. Average there of 91.09 and two maximums. So, Ryan so far, so good. Game on. 161. A couple of 4 0 victories so far in this group. Stevenson beat Ryan Finesse yesterday by. One hundred and eighty. Maximum number three from James. 
who he himself found a 4-0 against Sam Kankit yesterday in match three. 60. When these guys did battle yesterday, Richardson did dominate again. An average over 90. 60. It's one of the few bright sparks of his Group C campaign as Murray struggled on the outer ring once again. 99. Sometimes when Richardson is in this mood, he can draw an opponent 96. into the game and get them to play quicker, which suits him. And it feels like the game is being played in fast forward. 42. Might be a 1 3 3 attempt here. Not to be. A lot of people like the 19s on 165 if that's left. Treble, treble, and single leaves double 16. Seventy-eight. James Rickon, 120. Shanghai in twenties was missed by his son in the previous match twice. And on both occasions, Josh got the sixty-first. One. Richardson does Ryan not Rickon find it in the 90. same fashion by hitting the single. Single twenty for Murray. Would have left the ball. 66, James Rickward, 20. Richardson for a double break. James on the That's third finds It's good, James steady, Richardson. without being spectacular. He's doing a very good job here. And one leg away from a second bagel win Four of his campaign. James to throw first. Game on. 8-2-1. You'll be wondering why he doesn't play like this all the time. We've already spoken about the fact that pressure can be taken off your shoulders when you're in the bottom three Aye, too far. on the table at this stage of a campaign. And all of a sudden, that first start has been planted in the top of that 60, making everything easier. Don't be afraid to get in touch on social media today. 45. And if you're nice, I might even give you a shout out. But I'm already going to give a shout out to one of our one dear friends up in Scotland, Stuart McNally, the wee man. He always likes to get in touch and says lovely things about people. And he always deserves a shout out. 95, James Rickon, 140. And his good friend Stephen Passmore has been in touch as well. He's watching on as Richardson goes for the 140 in the win. And he misses a match start in a flash. This goes in. It's the quickest game of the week. Twenty. Double five. He thought that was in. Fifty. Neither is that one. You require one hundred and thirty-six. So all of a sudden, Richardson has got to fix this situation. He's had four darts for the match. Sixty-two. Missed. James, you require five. Double two. Job done. Shot on the match. That was James destructive. Richardson. Just took advantage of Ryan Murray, who knows he can't qualify, but maybe all of the adrenaline dissipated from his body. It was a steady performance of 89.73 and just over one out of every three darts at double. But so far, so good for Richardson, who still has a tiny, tiny ambition of still making the top two. Speaking of the top two, Simon Stevenson and Ryan Finesse are the top two. And they're going head to head right after this.
Welcome back, and we've just had a 4-0 victory for James Richardson in his last match as he clings on to some sort of hope of making the top two. But the top two in the table will now go head-to-head, -head. and when they played yesterday, it was also 4-0. On that occasion, it was Stevenson who won that match by four legs. But Ryan Finesse, for the first time, is now top of the table on 10 points on legs one. Huge match for James Richardson coming up against his son Josh in match nine. This is the start of round three as everybody has completed hey, seven matches in this back. campaign. So Game three off. matches per player left. Finesse will be hoping that he keeps his unbeaten run going today because he is the only unbeaten player. At one time in this group, Simon Stevenson had won six straight games. 140. He should have made it seven. What he could do with is a second win of the day. 100. He's been dicing with his opponents and dicing with game death. He needs to start these games a little bit hotter. 180. Say no more. He shouldn't have beat Ryan Murray. Murray had six darts to beat him. 44. He could have beaten Sam Kankett, but he didn't take it to the last leg decider. With darts missed at doubles. And Kankett took full advantage. Hey, we will see Kankett back on the hockey after this against Ryan Murray. They are both eliminated, so a bit of a dead rubber. But we may get a good game from those two now that the pressure is off. 97. Time you reckon 100. with 100 left after nine. This is a good leg. For an 11 daughter. Game shown the first Well, leg. well, well. Simon Stevenson. It's a very good time to find your best leg of the week. So I'm going to get Simon to throw first. Game His on. best leg of this group was 13 darts up to that point. He'll be hoping he can maintain that kind of excellence. 42. But then when you start with an 11 darter in a match, you always think that. You think this is going to be a good game. 100. It's never that easy. This is a very difficult sport. And these great daughters just make it look easy. 82. Just to give you a bit of a recap as to what happened yesterday, we saw some great stuff from... All of our players Ooh, in Group C won. and Group B. Daryl Pilgrim was very impressive last night with some great darts, but he found himself on only four points, as we see the averages in this game at the early stages. Andy Hamilton with six points last night. Really good display from the Hammer, and he has a great shout of making Saturday night. 60. see more from those guys from 10 p.m. tonight and the early games are going to be very telling 60 Scott Marsh who was the favorite to go through that group he finds himself at the bottom of the table needing a oh, perfect G3. night just to qualify no pressure Scott but there's plenty of pressure in this one 60. And I did say it's not easy to maintain the standard of an 11 data all the way through a match. Borderline impossible. 97. Back to normal here for Stevenson, leaving 196 after 15. But he's still in position to win the leg. That's the most important thing here. 60. Ryan, you're recording 160. As you can find that 60. It 
can go missing. Finesse does not get a shot at tops. 90. Tommy, 136. This is a hard out. So he has to settle for the setup. 96. Ryan, you record 70. To level at one leg all. He needs double 10. Game and he the figures it out. Ryan I Fennett. love that when he hit the double top, he was able to stay in rhythm. Didn't get flustered by the fact that the dart came out too high. So look, it's Ryan in this to very out. important game. game, which doesn't just involve the two players. It also involves Josh Richardson. One hundred and thirty-nine. What is the right result for me? Well, I can tell you because the leg difference between these two guys is identical. The points are identical. One hundred and thirty-seven. Richardson is five adrift in the leg difference, so the last thing he needs is somebody to win this match by a big margin. Ninety-six. It really doesn't matter who wins here. If you're Josh, you just want it to be 4-3. 99. I haven't seen any genies or any bottles around here, Josh, so I'm sorry I can't make your wishes come true. We just have to wait and see the chips fall here. And you can do yourself a favour by beating your dad again in game 9. And the game's left for Josh after that. Ryan Murray and Simon Stevenson in the very last game. Will it go down to that match? One hundred and forty. Advantage finesse. And Stevenson leaves a one six five. How many bogey numbers have we seen over the last couple of days? Eighty two. Ryan your record sixty eight. 16 for double, or 8 for tops. It's the first one. Game and shot he finds the third it. Leg. That's Ryan his best leg it. of the match. 15 darts, 4 a 2-1 lead, and everything seems to have gone south after that blistering start for Simon. Four leg, it's Simon to throw first. Game on. Not that there's anything wrong with going south. It's just a saying. 100. And Simon is from a beautiful part of the south, in the southwest of England. One hundred and forty. I've only been down there myself on a couple of occasions. Been down to Cornwall to visit places like Penzance and Truro. One hundred and forty. I also came down to Plymouth to do an exhibition with Simon quite a few years ago. Myself, Simon, and Raymond van Barneveld. 140. We had a lovely evening. I won my games. Simon beat Raymond. And everybody had a lovely time. 100. It's a bad first start. He needs a quick recovery. 78. He gets one. 155. Ryan, you record 151. Invitation here for Finesse to get a 3 1 lead. This might not have to go. 87. So he's finally Johnny poised on 56. This is a hugely pressure-filled shot. Fifty-eight. Not up to it right Ryan here. Ryan, 56. And finesse has shown a lot of finesse on double top and double 16. Game and once four, again, play. he finds that Ryan tops finesse. with a clinical nature, and he is starting to be the man to beat on Friday. He's very close to three wins from three. Three flick, it's Ryan to throw first. And Game even on. when he missed the single 16 there, again, he didn't get flustered. He stayed in rhythm. He knew exactly what he had to do. 
and he got the job done. 60. A lot of young players can learn from that. Don't show any loss of composure. Ninety-nine. One hundred and forty. I look at him in the background and I see that sixty want of getting back to the hockey. I distinctly think that we're starting to see some A-grade Ryan Finesse where he's maybe not playing his best but is thinking his best. He looks ready to win. And this is a decent game. You can see both of the averages over the 90 mark. And if Simon was to lose this, it wouldn't be the first time this week that he's lost with a 90 plus average. 135. In fact, he started his campaign on Tuesday with an average over 90 and losing. That was against Scott Marsh, where he averaged 93.44 and 50% on the doubles, but it wasn't good enough. That leaves 21. That leaves three. So what do you do here? No score. He so had to bust it, really. He didn't want to be on three. There was an argument that hitting the single one to leave double one was the play, but... It probably was. 100. Ronnie records 66. Maybe he did go for the one and he pulled it. How about this time? At tops for the match. 46. That has not gone to plan. Simon in record 52. He's had six darts for 66. Double top. Can he get out of jail again? 12. Not this time. Ryan in record 20. To top the table on points for the first time. Game shot on the match. It's 4 1. Ryan and it's not the result that Simon Stevenson wanted. It was the result that Ryan wanted, and that is also a very bad result for Josh Richardson. Ryan Finesse has the lower average, but he was splendid at the doubles. Only missed one, which was one for the match at the end of that match. But it didn't matter in the end because he found double 10, didn't he? 80% is a fine effort on that percentage. Next, we've got Sam Kankett and Ryan Murray playing our middle match of the day. Both are eliminated, but both can come back for two more points. Coming up right after this.
are now reaching our halfway point in today's Group C action and two players who are already eliminated from the possibility of getting to the finals on Saturday night will now go toe-to-toe -to -toe once again. Yesterday it was a win for Sam Kankett and revenge is being sought by Ryan Murray. His motivation is to get one over on Sam from yesterday. Okay, first they get Sam to throw first. Game on. Not that this is a vengeful place, I might add. But Ryan Murray does not want to be bottom of the table again. Six. He was in Group A. That will not have felt good. If he was to leave here, bottom of the table in Group C, sixty it won't do his confidence a great deal of good either. But we haven't seen Sam for three One matches now. One hundred. Since he beat Simon Stevenson and threw a few cats amongst very few pigeons. One hundred and forty. That win has caused a bit of a stir. One hundred. Simon Stevenson train. He remains on ten points now. Ryan Finesse has taken the lead at the top of the table. 140. It's the Richardson Derby after this. The eagerly anticipated 41. family battle between father and son, which will end round three. But if Kankett can get his 39. third win in this table... He may start to believe that Another invitation back to the live league is possible. Seventy-eight, Ryan your record, one hundred and twenty-two. Got a very slow start yesterday, but he's starting to play some proper stuff. And can he show Ryan Murray where this one-two-two two is? Ryan your record, one hundred and twenty-two. Let's find out. There's your answer. Fifty-four, Ryan your record, ninety. He's 87. And nothing seems to be working here for Ryan Murray. 60. Sammy Rickon 68. Got to be 15 ball. Do not go 25. Go ball this time. 27. Ryan you Rickon I just 30. have a feeling that these two guys are struggling for motivation. They know they're not going to qualify. 60. Was he going for the two for double 14? Or was that for double 41. 15? I guess you'd have to ask Ryan. Game shot on the first leg. My advice to Sam, Sam Kank Kank. is that over the last couple of days, he has shown us he's a very good double 16 hitter. He just needs to get there a little sooner. Second leg is Ryan to throw first. Game on. This whole thing about apologising for winning 68. legs. 68. Everybody knows I'm not a fan of it. I've never apologised for winning a leg of darts in my life. I thought that was the point. 60. When it comes to darts etiquette, in my own opinion, if you 100. accidentally drop a dart or a flight comes out and you have to stop their rhythm of getting to the yockey, Putting your hand up and saying sorry, that is darts etiquette. I like to see that. 59. But don't put your hands up and apologise for doing what you wanted to do. Can you imagine Tiger Woods draining a 20-foot putt? 79. Playing against Sergio Garcia and saying, oh, sorry about that. That's never going to happen. So why do we do it? 41. It's something that I would eradicate from the game anyway. 84. But then again, we've all got our own opinions. We live in the age of social media, where everybody's got an opinion. 96. Ryan, you're a 170. This will be unexpected. 122. That's not bad at all. 
100. Ryan Murray's finish that Ryan Murray's had is 116. All he wants is tops. Eight. Time you're recording. He's throwing good darts. They're not landing. One, four, five is possible. That was not that far away from that 45 bed. I can tell you that. Ryan, you're recording. 40. That was really close. James on the second good leg. shot from Ryan. Ryan Murray. 19 darts is good enough to level this one up at one leg all. I just wonder who was going to hit the front next. So look at Sam to throw pair. Sixty. I've always wondered what it would be like to throw Ryan's darts. Very heavy barrel, long stem and small flight. It's not your usual setup. In fact, the only other person that I've ever met. hundred. In fact, I didn't meet him because he was world champion before I was born. The only person I know of. Who was used to set up even close to this? 26. Was Leighton Reese. If you look back at those early World Championship matches, that great Welshman. 99. Used to deliver those short, stumpy barrels, which had some weight, a long stem, and a pear shaped flight. One. Nobody throws like Leighton Reese anymore. Everybody's obsessed with. Good positions and good technique, but 60. organic actions are not seen that much anymore, which is a bit sad. But forty-one, as I tend to coach a few people, we do want people to have good technique so they can be the best that they can be. But nobody throws like Leighton Reese. In fact, I don't think anybody ever has, one hundred and or maybe ever will anymore. Which is a bit of a shame. One hundred and Ryan is a very good technician. Time you've got forty-two. And he's left a one-one-six. James on the third. Double sixteen again Sam from Kangas. He keeps hitting it with this sort of regularity. I just get the feeling that if he came back and found more trouble twenties, well, he'd be a real Ryan's threat. Throw first. Game on. Fifty-five. Yeah, two shots hit from three attempts. Maybe the jury's out on 60. how good Sam Kankett is right now, but if you think about how good he has been in the past, he's done some good stuff. Sixty. He's represented his country at a couple of different levels. Fifty-nine. I have to do good stuff to get invited here. That's for sure. One hundred. For his country on two occasions, in 2013 and 2014. Now, when he played for Wales. One hundred and forty. In 2013, in the British internationals. In Scotland. Fifty-five. He played his game against England and lost to John Boy Walton. But when he 60. played against Scotland, he won. He beat Craig Baxter, who was a very good player from Scotland, I'm sure. Ryan Murray knows Craig. Aye, two one. Sixty. Running record one hundred and fifty. One fifty is not going to go. Fifty-eight. Sam, you require one hundred and twenty-two. Will the one twenty-two for three-one? That's useful. Sixty for bull. But that's been his problem this week. Seventy. That treble twenty bet has not been found enough. 
10 for double 16 or 2 for tops. 60. Damn, you require Well, 52. surely Kanket's going back to double 16. Twenty. And this time he misses it. Ryan, you require thirty-two. What can Ryan do? Game shot on the four flat. It's two two. Ryan Murray. I think it's a very fair result at this point. It could have easily been three one to Kankit, but he somewhat uncharacteristically missed that double sixteen bet twice. It's Sam to throw first. Just looking into more of Sam Kankit's international career. He did play one in twenty fourteen in the British Internationals, but he only played the once. He was not selected for one of the games for Wales, but he did play against Scotland again, but he lost to Ross Montgomery. No shame in that. One of Scotland's best players over 60. the last 20 years. In the Welsh team, he played alongside the likes of Nick Kenny, Mike Gillett, who we have seen in the live league. Wayne Warren, former world champion. Martin Phillips, former world master. And a certain Jonathan Clayton. 40. Yes. I'm talking about the ferret. So he's been in international teams with some 60. very good people. Forty-seven. Ryan record one hundred and sixty-one. One six one for the Scotsman is still a possibility on the ball. One hundred and seventy. He's been to a really Daniel big Holland out this week. Four. Forty-one. Four. This one's record. getting away 44. from Sam. Murray is at tops this time. I just wonder if Ryan Murray yeah, require 110. could use a bit more consistency with the finishing in, in choice of double. As the one ten's not taken by Sam, he's he doesn't seem to have a favourite between tops and double 16. Twenty. He's constantly flip-flopping between the two. Double five. Fifteen. A chance for Sam to steal this 72. one away. Another sixteen for tops. Thirty-two. Narrowly Ryan missed. Require five. Double two. Game shot on the nice fifth. Nice find for Ryan. Ryan and that Murray. is an unexpected twenty dart break of throw, but now he can throw for the match. To finally get some more points. Sick like it's Ryan to throw first. Game on. Now I just want to emphasize something that I have found about Johnny Clayton. In that British Internationals in Halifax in 2014, oh, which G5. was in April of 2014, Clayton played Craig Robertson in an international match and averaged 75.99. Oh, and G6. Now, if that doesn't prove to you that constantly sticking to your task and believing in your future and constantly making small improvements, then I don't know what will because Clayton was an international player averaging 75. 41. Seven years later, he was a Premier League champion. Stay patient, stay committed, and you never know where it will take you. 85. Door looking back at these old results. 41. Here's another one for you. In the 2013 internationals, Johnny Clayton played for Wales alongside Kankett. 100. And he played Stephen Bunting that day. And he beat him by three legs to one. There were some great 41. names in that England squad. Scott Waits, Jamie Hughes, Glenn Durrant, Martin Adams. Mark McGeaney. 138. 
Stephen Bunting would go on to be the world champion about nine months after that loss to Johnny Clayton. It's looking like a loss Six, for the Welshman on this occasion. Eight. As Ryan goes for double four. No score. Not just yet. It should be next time. Eighty-five. Ryan, you require eight. Second attempt. Getting closer. No score. Sam, you require one. Too much gunpowder in the cannon. Top stops. Nine. That will come out of the clear blue sky. That's Ryan, for sure. Eight. Back to double four for the third time. Game he does find the, the back match. of the net with that one. Ryan it's a 4-2 win, so they are 1-1 for their matches over the last couple of days. But you can see from the celebration, or the lack of it, from Ryan Murray, because the game wasn't good. I'm not going to sit here and say that it was a classic, because it wasn't. But ultimately, the checkouts were better from Sam Kankett, but he didn't get enough chances, did he? 23 darts at double for Ryan Murray, and only four hits. That is something he needs to address in the near future. Back to this family affair now, and James Richardson will take on Josh next, and it's a huge match in the scheme of our table. That will be with us in a few moments.
been talking a lot about home internationals in the last match when it came to Sam Kankett. But of course, Josh Richardson, who plays his father now, is going to make his debut for his country next week. Let's see what he can do in this next game. This is a pretty good warm-up for that England debut next week. But Josh Richardson really could use another two points here. Okay, first against James to throw first. And if he does beat Game his dad up. for the second day in succession, Richardson can't qualify. And he will be going home after this. Nine, but two, five. But will they be going home together? Or will one of them be staying? Balls, he won. Because they're not both going to qualify. Ryan Finesse is in the distance a little bit. He'll be back against Sam Kankett next. And if he wins that Nine, game, he's very six. close to being safe. <coughs> when this game happened yesterday, it was, without a shadow Nine, of a doubt, six. the best game of the day. Richardson, 103 average in defeat. Talking about James. And Josh, 100. a winning average of just short of 94. He does have another problem, though. 119. The leg difference for both players is the same at plus three. And if hey, you look at where Finesse is and Stevenson, they're both well ahead in that leg difference count. So whoever wins this has got to win it by a margin. James could genuinely 58. use James another 4 0 win, like his win against Ryan Murray from game six. Double eight. 105. That corner of the board has been letting him down all week long. 133. James requires 16. Let's find out what he can do this time. It's a the really first good, day. accurate shot. James Richardson. And with Josh sitting on 54 for that first leg, that is a really good win in the end. Second leg is Josh to throw first. Game on. Only two games per player left post this game. A T2. There could be a couple of dead rubbers in there. 140. Well, they're a little bit better than the last game. I think both Sam and Ryan Murray would agree that that was a little bit smelly. 139. This one is a little bit better than that. You can usually tell the intensity of the game judging by James's eyes. But I do get this feeling when these two play each other, whether it's for a soft drink or whether it's for points or whether it's for pounds, that there was always going to be something on the line with these two. There's nothing like a soft dabbling game between these two. It's always going to have something on it. Double top. James on the second is a 12 leg. Data for James, James Richardson. As he looks to get that big win against his son, which will be hugely damaging for his chances of making the top two. Look, it's James to throw first. Game on. Let's talk about the best that James can do from here. It is 12 60. points. He has a game against Kankett. And he has a game against Stevenson. What he needs is to beat Stevenson and then Stevenson to be beaten by his son a little bit later on in the schedule. It's it's going to be so tight if James keeps winning. 180. With both of these two averaging over 100. They're starting to show us how it's supposed to be done this game. 60. If 
Advantage Josh after six. I can't imagine what it's like to play your father in this kind of setting. Hey, two, one. I only ever played with my dad once in a pairs game at the Queen's Head Pub in Guidepost in Northumberland. That was a proud moment for me. Hey, two, one. Pressure for 140. Consequently, that pub's not even there anymore, which is really sad. Had some great times in that bar. Can't stop progress, though. 100. Probably Probably four, 106. And made into apartments now. Hey, T9. Josh, you required four. Josh, for the break back. There's a somewhat intense look on his face now. Aim shot on the third he leg. takes that leg. Josh Richardson. This is a great standard of play in this game. And I don't want this to end, but it has to at some point, as it's only best well, of seven. Well, Josh to throw first. Game on. One hundred and five, the average for Josh. Ninety-five for James. Sixty. I just wonder, and I, I, I know why James is called ruthless because sixty. Ruthless Richardson rolls off the tongue, and he is a very ruthless dart player. But I would love someone to get in touch with me and let me know why Josh is called stealth. Fifty-seven. I'd love to see what that's all about. Hey, T7. Is it because he's quiet and he doesn't say much to people and he just walks around darts venues like he's in stealth mode? That's just me guessing. 100. I'm sure somebody's going to get in touch. Somebody will know. 43. Say one thing for sure, and that's that Ryan Finesse is in the practice room right now thinking. I would love James to win this game. And if that happens and Finesse beats Sam can't get next, hey, he'll be on nine. 14, and his closest challenger will be on 10. Seventy-eight. I love this part of a group. Really are starting to see who is stepping up to the plate. One hundred. Joshua requires seventy-two. Is a bit late and a bit in vain. Really? Game really? On the fourth leg, Josh Richardson. I have very little in words for that. In your face, Dad. James to throw first. <laughs> okay. That was a bit brash. 100. I was a bit lost when he was on 72 there, and he was looking up towards the north of the board. Here's me thinking he was going to go for trouble 20 for double Ball six. Deep. I didn't see that coming. These two are cut from the same cloth, aren't they? They love a bit of a showman finish. Well, when you're playing well, why not? 57. But under this sort of pressure. That was a bit out there. 60. James's average is starting to slip under 90. He's losing his touch on that treble 20. He's hit two shots from a possible six. 57. Josh has hit both checkouts perfectly. 121. Two, two doubles to win the last leg. 43. I can't imagine the banter between these two in the car. 83. Games record 140. If they both don't qualify. And Josh wins both games. Might be quite silent all the way back to Northampton. 96. 
and a few miles extra past that. Nine, two, four. Yeah, lovely lead, but 47. Richardson will go to double 16. James and finish play. things off in 18 James darts. Richardson. So it's 3-2 to Richardson Senior. Can he finish the job in the next leg or possibly the leg after that? Six leg is Josh to throw first. Game on. One hundred and forty. We both made Saturday finals previously. But I think even though James hey, has won a week before, that maybe we could say that they both have underachieved. 80. Especially Josh, considering that he has dominated a group previously. And when he went to the Saturday finals, it just didn't 140. work out. 140. But those Saturday finals are brutal. You only play two games in a group. And if you don't go through that group, Bye bye. That's the end of Saturday night. Twenty-one. And if you do get through, it gets cutthroat after that. It's a knockout scenario. Aye, T three. But it's done Which that way for your entertainment. No one sixty check out there for Josh. One. He does leave a two daughter. The man who's got more stars on his shirt than. A Philip Taylor and a Trina Gulliver shirt combined. 127. Joshua requires 60. What I mean by that is because world champions love to put a star on their shirt. Double top for Josh. Forty. And we might not be going all the way in this one. James, you require 70. For the 4 2 win. 18 for double 20. Stays there. 30. And doesn't hit it. Maybe he should have gone back to the middle of the hockey. Just gave that a bit too much Joshua force. Require 20. It was 4 3 yesterday. Game and it's going to be 4-3 today. Josh Richardson. But to who? I suppose we have to pose that question. If you look at James in the background there, he couldn't look. Seven from final against James to throw first. But contrary to yesterday, James has the darts in leg seven this time. It's not the same standard as yesterday, but it has been equally encapsulating. Josh's average over 91. James has steadied up at 89 over the last two or three legs. 83. Staring the hole through that board. Tearing shreds out of that size. 100. One hundred. He looks ready to win. He might just do it in the next six darts. Forty three. The quick switch. Fifty eight. Maybe too quick. But Josh needs a maximum. And he's only had one in this match. 140. He knows he needed the lot. 129 turns into 72. I guarantee he's not going to go double 18. 79. Very wise, James. Very wise. Hang on a minute. 133. James Rickard, 56. To finish the job. Double ten. Thirty six. And he may be out in the next ten seconds. He has Joshua bossed this 40. final leg. 
from start to almost finish. And Richardson just stuck around. That 133 approach was fabulous. Good and he finishes shot on the what his dad couldn't. Josh and he is the person to eliminate his father from this group. <laughs> Look at him doing that in front of his dad, about six inches away from him. Oh, the disrespect. 91 average does tell you that he was slightly the better player, but he had to reach very deep to get a second win over his father in two straight games over Thursday and Friday. He's still in with a shout as he goes to 12 points, but James is going to be going home in the next couple of hours. Sam Kankett and Ryan Finesse will take to the hockey next as we start our fourth round of our matches coming right up. It's now officially a three-horse race for two spots in Group C. Ryan Finesse is the man at the top, and he can widen that gap with a win here against Wales's Sam Kankett. Ryan is at the top on leg difference, and it's a pretty healthy advantage at plus 11. Josh Richardson has stayed in touch with a very hard-fought victory over his dad. But if Finesse does win this game and the next game that he plays against Ryan Murray, he's going to be safe. Go first, look at Sam to throw first. 
Game on. The pressure is fully on Simon Stevenson now. Who hasn't been playing at the same level today that he was the last couple of days. He has hey, one win fine. from three. Josh has two wins from three. Ryan has three wins from three. So he's Mr. Undefeated after 60. three rounds. What Ryan would give for the somewhat simple win that he got yesterday by four legs to one against Sam. That would be welcomed and would put him extremely close. Aye, T5. Another berth on a Saturday night. But there were times yesterday where Ryan hit the wall. Aye, T3. Around about this time, he had a poor game against Josh Richardson. 140. His average tumbled when he played against Simon Stevenson in match nine. This is game 10, so it's a roughly the same time slot. 100. Slot. He'll be hoping he doesn't have that same problem. So far, so good. Now, I think he's made the right play here. That first start is dangling. Go for the 16s. That is a beautifully thought out visit. Sacrifice the maximum. Sacrifice the opportunity of leaving double 18. 77. To make sure that that first start does not fall. Double top. Game show on the first leg. Ryan I've got Burnett. so much respect for what he's just done in those two visits because he thought out what was happening and he still took care of business. A great so first leg. Ryan to throw first. Game on. Too often we see people go for darts that aren't purely sitting in that 60 bed and they risk going for the shots that could oh, find darts not. on the floor. As soon as that first dart wobbled, Ryan thought, I'm not going anywhere near that. One on the good play. He's just gone up in my estimation for doing that. Seventy. It's a bit like the time in the live league where Diogo Portella had it was 180 left. He had two treble twenties. Sixty one. And he decided to go for double fourteen. Because Two of his darts were standing very upright. And he thought, I'm not going to bust this. I'm not going to make that error. So he hit the double 14 to leave double 16. And from that moment on, I've always appreciated people who just think things out slightly bar. differently. He's hitting that treble 20 for fun right now. One <laughs> hundred and eighty. And he's feeling a bit feisty. He does get a one eighty this time. To leave double two. Forty three. Ryan records four. I didn't expect him to do that. Double one. Two. Well, let's face facts, Ryan. You're the one who left yourself on double two. That's One a great shot from Kangas. 180. Ryan His Roy first two. maximum of the match. No He's going to get a look at the 52 Sammy as well. Roy 52. See, there's the problem with leaving those smaller doubles. One shot. 20. And he needed the extra one. Ryan, you require two. He only two. has himself to blame for only getting one at double 16. Game Double one is there leg. for Finesse. Ryan Finesse. And it wasn't Finesse, I suppose, from Furness. But he finally gets to 2-0. So look at Sam to throw first. Forty five. Everybody loves to play darts when they come here, but nothing prepares you for a game where Whatever you do doesn't matter. 125. Remember that you have integrity. You have 
this inequality of it's just a game of darts, yes. Aye, it's a but I don't want to win whether there's something on the line or not. I've always had that. You've got to find motivation in the smallest things. 46. I wonder what Sam's going to do for the rest of the season. He's got the opportunity to go to some WDF events. Aye, two, one. He may even get an invite back here. Challenge to events as well. If he can do well in some of the ranking tournaments. Oh, he may find himself at something like the World Championship at Lakeside next year. I know the Dutch Open's coming up. 60. Have his name on it. You just never know. Win that and your career could change. But the only thing on the mind of Finesse right now one hundred and four. Getting this job done and getting to fourteen points. One hundred, Ron. You're one hundred and forty-five. Seen plenty of tents at this number this week. And here's another single fifteen no, or a nineteen. Yeah. Just wants to make sure he does the right thing. 105. And he does. Damn, you're 105. A beautiful first. single. I don't think that's in. It isn't. 41. Ron, you're 40. Well, Finesse is going for tops again. Third. Isn't hitting 10s either. 89. You can't say that Sam hasn't had his opportunities in this game. Bullseye. 64. Good line. Ryan, you almost dropped in. 10. He's hitting a myriad of doubles in this match. Can he add another? No score. Not quite. Sam, you required 25. Double eight. Nine. Oh, he just needed one more. He was Ryan gradually getting there. Ten. And Finesse goes back for double five. Game and takes third it with leg. no hesitation. Ryan Not a classic leg by any means, but 22 darts is enough to break the throw of Kankit. And this is a destructive performance. Well, like it's for Ryan the table. to throw first. Game on. Because the leg difference is already working in Finesse's favour at plus 11. If he wins 4 0. By holding in leg four, it'll be plus 15, which is 10 better than Stevenson. 10 legs. 39. 71. It's fast becoming apparent that maybe that game between Josh Richardson and Simon Stevenson in match 15 could be a shootout. It may depend on what Stevenson does next against James Richardson. He badly needs a win. One hundred and eighty. Looks imminent for Ryan. He's getting so close to it. One hundred. Ryan, you record one hundred and ten. Multiple visits to get this win by four legs to nil. Forty-seven. He's getting closer. That's about as kind as I can be about that one, I'm afraid. Exasperation on the face of Kankit. Forty-four. Ryan, you record sixty-three. This time he's looked genuinely frustrated today. Double twelve. Good. And Ryan Finesse gets match. a fourteen daughter to Ryan finish off Fennett. that four-nil victory, and he is so so close. To being through. He's not there yet, but because of his leg difference as a result of that 4 0 win, he is supremely close. It didn't really have to be brilliant, but it's good enough. We have got another game coming up for you in a couple of minutes' time. It's Simon Stevenson against James Richardson, and this one is so important for Simon. If he loses it, he's going to be behind the eight ball.
news that is reaching us to this point in the Group C table is that Ryan Furness is through. He has done enough to this point to make sure he's involved on Saturday night. So it looks like Matthew Dennant has some company in the shape of the man from Salisbury. Who's going to join him? It could be Simon Stevenson, but he badly needs a result here. 14 points and that leg difference of plus 15 has got him there. But the reason he's not going to be usurped from the top two is because Simon Stevenson still has to play Josh in the last match. So it's impossible for Ryan to fall outside that top two. Go okay, first, they get Simon to throw first. Game on. But it has to be addressed that Simon has lost his last two matches, has remained on 10 points, and he must change that here. 140. He has another problem. Josh Richardson has got Ryan Murray after this to finish up round number four of our matches. If he wins that one, then Simon Stevenson may not catch Josh. One so it's got to be destructive from here. Otherwise, the road to Plymouth will see Simon's car on it. Aye, two, one. Just how vital was it that Josh beat James in match nine by the smallest of margins? 105. What a start from Simon. One hundred. Time you require seventy six. This was a very good game yesterday, and it promises much once again. Double top. Fifty six. We'll have to return. Forty five. So far today, Simon, Simon has only won one match, same as James. No score. And he hasn't won the first leg yet. Fifty nine. Simon, you require twenty. Wonder how much adrenaline James has got left after all of the effort he's put in this week. This should be quite an easy shot. Game shot on the first leg. Doesn't make it look Simon easy Stevenson. by hitting that bottom ten percent of that double ten, but it still finds the red bit. For a 1-0 lead against James R501. So James to throw first. I do believe that's his Twitter handle. Hey, T3. James always strikes me as the kind of guy that when he's in a really aggressive mood on the dartboard, when he strolls towards the board, he's a bit like that bloke who's got a beautiful apple tree in his garden. And you're there trying to steal something to make a pie. Nine and he's walking six. down the path as if to say, you want my apples, do you? Sixty. He's hoping to hit maximums to say, get a load of those apples. 123. He's really not an aggressive person. <laughs> He's such a lovely lad. He always has been. Always bragging about what he's making in his hotel room with his plethora of different kitchen implements like George Foreman grills and omelette makers and slow cookers. Oh, he's got more cooking equipment on tour than most caterers. One hundred. That's a good turn from Simon, but James is already in position to take leg two. Double twelve. Eighty. Simon, you record one hundred and forty-three. No game changer there. One of the hardest finishes on the dartboard for me. One four three. Sixty. Really game difficult. Required twenty-four. Got to get closer. 
Got to change the target. James on the well second done, James. Man. 18 James dot hold there. And he's doing his son a bit of a favour right now. He couldn't take him out himself. But now, it seems like Josh is clapping for Simon Daddy. Simon to throw first. Game on. One hundred and seventy seven start. One eighty is a great, but you'd love to get a one seven seven to start because if you can bank the maximum next, you'll have an easier finish for a nine daughter. Oh, deep Everybody off. knows that. And he's in again. One hundred. Is the leg difference going to come into play between Stevenson and Josh? There's one leg between oh, them. Five. I'm trying to figure out the ideal scenario for Simon. Obviously, he wants to win this game. 140. After this, he could do with Ryan Murray beating Josh. It's a tough ask, considering the form levels over the last couple of days. I mean, we're going 84. If that happens, it will be a shootout in game 15. Double 12. Game yeah, it's a the lovely 12 player. data from Simon. Simon Stevens. He could deal with a few more of those in this match and possibly in the next one. Double 12 is getting a fair few looks in this game. Well, I guess James does throw first. Game on. Average of almost 97. 100. Great level of play. He knows he's got to be good from here to the end. But you don't want to be in the spot where you require favours. If he does beat James and Josh beats Ryan, it will still come down to that last match, but oh, it won't be as one. clean cut, potentially. It may have to be a certain margin that he has to beat Josh by. And you don't want that. If somebody offered Simon Stevenson right 140. now, all you have to do is beat Josh in the last game to qualify. He would accept it right now. Josh would 100. not. What he wants is for James to win this game. And then if he beats Ryan Murray next, he'll be safe. With the match to spare. 140. Just to paint all of the different pictures for you. 140. So, I mean, you record 121. This would give him a bit of breathing space. Bullseye. 96. He got the Game super zoom on 70. the bullseye there. Double six again. Game well, shot on the four. It play. looks like the same puncher wood from the previous time he was on double six. So here's the uh, the advice that I would give you, James. Just keep leaving double six. If I get Simon to throw first, game on. Bit of a dagger to the belly there. He's thinking, I just want another 140. shot. One hundred and forty. Shot of that twenty-five. James says no. A bit like the famous computer from Little Britain. 134. That's a very British joke, by the way, for all of our international viewers. And a big thank you to everybody tuning in on Sporty Stuff TV this morning and this oh, early afternoon. Nine. Hope you're enjoying your lunch with some darts action. Don't be afraid to get in touch with us at Darts Live League on Twitter. Let us know where you're watching from. 78. Love to hear from you. This is our last 15-match session for the week. Tonight we've got 10 matches. 134. And another 10 tomorrow night for the finals to almost complete the Champions Week 12. 140. So I mean, we're 128. Pace in this game is starting to creep up a little bit. Oh, how Josh Richardson wants to start to hit this 149. 63. 
James Rick 149. Doesn't scare it. Hey, I too far. was going to stay on that James 60. Rick 65. To try and leave double 12. But Tops calls Simon's name. 45. This could be costly. James requires 64. Double eight. James and double the four there. gives James the lead James with a vital break of throw. So Josh is thinking on the edge of his seat right now. It may be in my hands in the very next game. Simply gets James to throw first. Game on. We could potentially have a full round of matches. Hey, two five. That are dead rubbers. If James wins this leg and Josh wins the next match, it's all said and done. Hey, two one. But don't go anywhere. One hundred and twenty one. What's about to happen around the corner? One hundred and one slipping away ever so slightly. Sixty. But it was at times throughout the week for Simon, and he was able to stick in there. And cast that little one shadow of doubt on whether his opponent could get across the line quickly. 65. So it's a 170 to win the match. That's what we like to call, these days, the Nathan Aspinall shot. 30 two. That's 35. And he wants to stay on the 20s. 55. He did have the 17s to look at as well. For the win. Oh, that was close. Hey, do you want? Super close. What was he 64. trying to do there? Trying to lead double 15? Didn't work out. Things are getting pretty desperate. 60. For the Games require 89. He needs misses. Double five. 79. Simon, you require 104. Now we can do himself a favour. But he can't. 88. James, you require 10. He's already missed one match dart. He's going to go two double four. Game and shot on the a match. Huge win James for Richardson. Josh Richardson. A great win for James. Yes, it has to be said. Let's have a look at the stats. 86.48 for the 4-2 win. But look at Simon. Ten more. And he didn't get the win. He didn't even get three legs out of the contest. But the checkout percentage for James was very decent. But like I said, that's a huge win for Josh. Because if he wins his next game, he is safe. And Simon Stevenson will not be able to catch him when they play in match 15. Josh's next game is coming right up.
getting very close to the climax of Group C here at the Online Darts Live League for Week 3 of Phase 3. And now Josh Richardson has not one, but two opportunities to book his spot in Saturday night's finals. Opportunity one against Ryan Murray right now. He knows the state of play. And if he wins his ninth match of this group, he'll get to 14 points and Simon Stevenson can no longer catch him. Many thanks to his dad who's just beaten Simon to give him this double opportunity. Okay, first leg is Ryan. But so if Ryan Murray first. does find some game form on. in this game, he'll plant the seed of doubt in Josh. He will still have a chance of beating Simon in the last game of the session. 140. Let's touch on Ryan first, though. He'll be extremely disappointed that he's only picked up four points in this group. 60. He has a Ryan derby to look forward to in match 14, so he'll play two matches of the next three, and then he will be back on the road up to Scotland to reassess before his next challenge. 125. What Josh didn't want to see was this good start from Ryan. Four big troubles in his first six darts. How often does this happen? The other day, 60. when Scott Marsh was challenging for that top spot against Matthew Dennant on Wednesday, up popped Simon Stevenson, who had a shocker of a Tuesday, and he ends up beating both people to send Matthew Dennant through eventually. One hundred. If you think this is a foregone conclusion, think again. Ryan Murray doesn't care that Josh needs to win this match or the next. Ryan just wants to win another game. Now the right play here is the 25 or the bull. 135, Ryan. At least he thought 70. it out right. Now can he find the three dot out to give himself an unexpected lead? He's been chasing this whole leg. Double sixteen. Game it's shown a the thing first of beauty. Josh and even with his opponent Ryan Murray finding all the troubles at the start of the leg, Josh is the person who finishes it in fifteen so dots. Josh to throw first. Game. I get a very strong feeling that James Richardson may have to either stick around for another day to support his son, or Josh is going to be travelling home on his own on Sunday. 97. We'll touch more on Simon Stevenson when he plays his final match against Josh in match 15, but what a topsy-turvy week he's had. 115. It's fair to say that the week of Ryan Murray hasn't been topsy-turvy. In fact, it's been uh, fairly consistent, but not in a good way. He's been languished in the bottom half of all of the tables he's been involved in. I really hope that doesn't dent his confidence too much because he's had a very good 2022 so far. Making the Scottish Open final where he lost to James Hurrell. 58. He has made other big runs in other tournaments as well. But the year is young. Plenty more to do. 81. It was a 106 in the first leg. So a 105 looks positively simple. Same sort of finish. 38. Josh should record 105. Doesn't get the 60 this time. 64. Ryan, you record 124. This is for a break back. Bullseye. Hey, it has been a miss for Ryan this week. It has been left. 
Comfortable 16. James on the and second it's coming man. up chumps for him, isn't Josh it? 2-0. And then when he gets to the end of the legs, he's not hanging around, that's for sure. How we just love to repeat what he's already done for another two legs in the bank. Two legs Ryan to throw for game. Yeah, very steady. 93.94 is tantamount to 216 darters. When you've been hanging around darts as long as I have, you start to recognize the numbers that equate to certain amounts of darts in a 501 leg. That's when you know you're a darts nerd. 95. And I am. I have been for many years. Someone's been in touch with me on social media, actually. 140. To talk to me about one of my old locals. Someone by the name of Robbie Tinmouth. Said he used to play at the Queens and Guide Post. But it's now a corner shop. Oh, well, that's a shame. If those walls could talk. Had some good times in that hey, Queen's Head Bar before I moved to Australia. Such a shame that it's no longer a darts venue. 41. Advantage Richardson in more ways than one. Playing better. Scoring better. In a better position. 134. To leave himself on 70. And this is a great performance so far. He'll get very close to 100. He finds this 70. Double 16 again. 38. Ryan, you require one. This time he's done a bad dart at it. Forty-three. Russia required thirty-two. Should be three nil. Isn't yet. And he's got flights in the way. So he has to go either left or right, pick a spot and go for it. It's a go for broke shot. Give it some welly, lad. 16. That's a very good try. Ryan, you require 127. 57 ball is what is left. 55. Joshua requires 16. The double eight is open for the double break. Game and he on finds the third it this leg. time with nothing Josh in the Richardson. way. And everything seems to be dissipating from the enjoyment factor of this game for Simon Stevenson. Well, Josh to throw first. Game on. He had hopes that Ryan Murray would do him a favour, but doesn't look like it's going to happen. 60. The Richardson average has come down towards 87. Murray around 80, which is unfortunately where he's been 55. most of the time this week. That's not going to get it done. If you want to win on Saturday night here, you're going to have to average around 93 for me. Maybe a oh, tiny bit under that this week. And don't forget, when we come to finals tomorrow, I will reveal I who will five. participate in week four of phase three, which will be the last qualifying week for the phase three Champions Week. 56. Remember the two Scots are already there. Walters and Williams. Jim McEwen is there. Chaz Barstow is there. Forty-one. Much to look forward to at the end of the month. And what is proving to be a rather bumper month of darts. Unbelievably, there's only two nights left of the Premier League in London and the great town of Newcastle. And then... The playoffs will take place in Berlin just before oh, the World Cup of Darts in the middle of June. Premier League playoffs in Berlin with 14,000 people watching. What could possibly go wrong? 58. That's going to be boisterous at the Mercedes-Benz Arena.
Josh just wants to get this done. Oh, and he Great ball. last start. He doesn't want to hang around. Fifty-three. Joshua Brooker, one hundred. Don't sense a great deal of resistance from Ryan. Unfortunately, could he do it with a wallop? One hundred and twenty. Fine attempt. So it's looking very likely that our last three matches will be just for sure. Twenty-five. Because Ryan Finesse has qualified. Can Josh punch his ticket? No score. Not yet. Finally require 84. That's now four. Match darts missed. Bullseye. 36. And Josh goes Josh back to double 36. 18 for a third visit. Double nine. 18. And that's now seven. Finally require 48. Darts for the match gone. Thirty-two. Now he's got eighteen. What does he do? Should require eighteen. Does he split? His eyes haven't deviated away from that double nine. Oh boy. Ten. Ryan requires sixteen. Is this game about to be flipped on its head? Oh, that's really unfortunate. No score. That's the problem with those heavy Joshua darts. When you get a collision, eight. it's quite violent. No score. That is now Ryan 12 requires 16. match darts missed in this leg. No score. And Ryan Murray goes too far north. It's one of those shocker legs. Joshua fact, require eight. I'm not going to confirm this yet, but I've got a feeling this may be the worst leg of the year so far. And it's an important one. No score. Unlucky for some, number Ryan, 13 on Friday the 13th. Game and we go all the way back to 5-0-1 with Ryan Murray almost embarrassed to see that he's just broken the throw in 31 darts. So if it's Ryan to throw first, game on. It just had to be 13 darts first for the match, didn't it? On Friday the 13th. I didn't even know it was Friday the 13th until this 30. morning. And I looked at the date on my phone. As far as legs go, that was a bit of a horror show, I'm afraid. 140. But they happen. In fact, they happen in the grandest 60. of venues to the grandest of players as well. Just remember Michael Smith and Peter Wright in the first set of their World Championship final. They had a leg very similar to that. 140. But give Josh Richardson a lot of credit. After all of those missed darts, he's come back to the hockey and hit two 140s. 93. Eighty-nine. This is a really good leg, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him hit that one three-two. Ninety-five. Joshua require one hundred and thirty-two. If I was in this position, I'd just want a straight turn to leave me double sixteen for the next visit. <coughs> That's exactly what he wants. The last thing you want to do here, Josh, is leave yourself on double 18 again. 42. Maybe that's a good thing. Oh, 
thoughts of Simon Stevenson right now. He's thinking, come on, Ryan, I'm sure you can still win this match. But the match started double 15 is missed. Six twice. Ryan, you require 140. Six. Can't leave tops. And Richardson Which comes back 30. with a choice. Straight for it. He's not sure. I think he's splitting it. It's double eight. And Go finally, he match. gets across the line. Josh Richardson. I'm just going to do a quick calculation with his second match dart at that visit. It took him 17 match darts to get across the line. The averages plummeted completely in the last couple of legs. But Josh Richardson, does he care? No, because he's going to Saturday night. So he's done his job. Everything now is focused on Saturday night. But everybody else has got one more match to go. So we have three matches in total for you before we leave you for Friday afternoon. We're going to start with James Richardson against Sam Kankett. Okay, let's see what these guys can do with their final matches in Group C as we have one more round to go. Match number 13 on Friday the 13th after that incredible end to the previous match will now take place with James Richardson up against Sam Kankett. Sam 
Sam can get himself off the bottom of the table with a win here. You can see that his leg difference is yeah, like James slightly right inferior game off. to fifth place Ryan Murray. 60. But all of the players can now relax and just play it. Which means that we might see some pressure less darts. 140. We still have Ryan Finesse against Ryan Murray in match 14. And if oh, Finesse six. wins that match, he will top this group, which will signify which group he goes into on Saturday night. So that has to be taken hey, into eight. account. If you win Group C, you will also be in the same group 57. as Matthew Dennant, the winner of Group A. Oh, Not that these players think about that too much, but you always want to be the winner of a group going into Saturday night. It just makes you feel better. 140. It's better for your live league CV as well. One hundred. It'll be interesting to get the thoughts of Sam after this campaign to see what he's thought of it the last couple of days. One hundred and twenty. We haven't seen the best of him, but we have seen flashes of it. Oh, it's a great dart till he double sixteen. Ninety-two. And he finds the wrong bet. Games you require twenty. I get the feeling this game's going to be quite quick. Games on the first leg. And a very nice James 17 Richardson. daughter from James Richardson who takes the lead and is scampering towards the back of the room waiting to get on with leg two. Second leg, it's Sam to throw first. Whenever I say the two words quite quick, I always think of Alan Rickman from the movie Love Actually. He says to Rowan Atkinson, can we be quite quick? Well, this game is quite quick. 60. But if you look into the career of James Richardson, we can talk about these guys in a bit more depth now because we can take the focus away from the table. 100. He's played in many a European Tour event in the PDC. He has made a quarter final of a European Tour event in the very first one. 10 years ago at the Austrian Darts Open. He lost to Dave Chisnell by six legs to three on the 29th hey, of April, 2012. That was the very first one. This weekend, in the Czech Republic, they're playing the 90th European Tour event. James was there at the very beginning. 58. One hundred. Sam, you reckon? Also made the semi-finals of the Irish Masters back in 2011. Fifty-eight. James, you reckon? Lost out to a certain Wayne Jones. Well, actually, he lost out to Mark Walsh. I do beg your pardon. As he goes for tops. James, and finishes the that one off in 15. James darts, Richardson playing like he's in a hurry because he's the one who's going to be going back to Rushton today. So I guess James to throw first. Yeah, that Irish Masters in 2011, it rung a bit of a bell with me. One hundred and twenty. I beat Wayne Jones in the semi-final by five legs to four. And Mark Walsh beat James by five legs to four. And consequently, I lost the final to Walsh. One hundred and twenty. I could have played James in that final. That was the tournament where I famously 60. beat Joe Cullen on the score sheet. By four legs to three. But the official in that tournament, who shall remain nameless, 115. said to Joe and I before the last 16 match, it's best of nine. Joe was 4 1 up. One I came back to win five legs to four. We found out later that it was only best of seven. So technically, Joe beat me four legs to three, or four legs to one even. 58. But because I was told it was best of nine, I actually won the match by five legs to four. A strange thing that happened in Ireland 11 years ago. And 
And look what Richardson's doing when there's no pressure on him. 101. Game he is flying 76. in this game. Back to tops. Game and in for the tops. Third this James is Richardson. excellent stuff from James. He's not doing anything wrong. And he's going for his own record of the quickest game in this group this week. But look at Sam to throw that. Not that I know exactly how many seconds and minutes it was, but this is a really good performance. 140. You can see that Sam's not playing poorly. But he's only one had one shot at a double. 180. And that might be the only shot he gets. Uh, 81. Somewhat resigned look and is James going to go out with a wallop 140 oh, he, he really fancied it didn't he we all did we thought maybe he can go out with a nine daughter 100 he could be six darts away from his best performance in this group somewhat oh, ironic seven. you feel Two darts away from a top plus average. Change of require, easy four. It might not be his best performance in this group. It might be his best performance of the whole week. 60. Sam, you require 99. Come on, Sam. Put a flake in it. Everybody loves a 99. I don't blame him for going for two double tops. 60. But I fear the worst for him James now. Require 24. As James, James wins shot on the match. with a 13 dollar and the average will be very impressive. Congratulations, Sam. Well done on a first week here at the Live League, but you've just been swept aside by a really good performance by James. We'll see him more in the future, but this is not his week. Josh Richardson has made it through with Ryan Finesse, and we will see more of Ryan in the next match as he takes on his namesake, Ryan Murray, in match 14. That's coming right up.
two more matches for you in Group C here at the Online Darts Live League for Friday, and we're going to start with the Ryan Derby. So as they get their last practice darts out the way, let's go down to the board as Owen Binks will referee this one once again. The destiny of the number one spot in Group C is in the hands of this guy. But if he does lose to Ryan Murray and Josh beats Simon Stevenson in match 15, the number one spot will go to Josh. And that will mean they will be in different groups come Saturday night. Okay, first leg is Ryan Furness to throw first. Game on. This is the referee's nightmare, of course. Two guys called the same name. 60. So Owen has to do full names when he says who goes first and who requires what. 86. I've got so much respect for all of these referees in the game. They do a fabulous job. And they don't just call the scores. 78. They have to look after the players' welfare. They have to call foul shots. They have to do a multitude of tasks. 140. And this one already is going to be fast and fiery. But this guy's been really good today, hasn't 135. he? 135. He's not only going for the number one spot in the table, but he's going for 10 points for the day as well. He's got eight so far, with a leg difference of plus 12 for the day only. His closest challenger is James Richardson, who's had six points with plus six. 180, Ryan, 170. How about a maximum finish after a maximum hit by the Salisbury 98. man? 98, Ryan, 48. Double 16 imminent. And that's what he finds. So the four Burnett. horses are starting to show what they can do with all the pressure lifted from their shoulders. And a 14 data gives us more evidence. Second, I guess Ryan Murray to throw first. Game on. And whatever Ryan does when he goes back to Scotland, I'd like to wish him all the very best of luck. It's been really nice chatting with him this week. 85. I really do think he's a great player. It just hasn't worked out for him this week. And in his quest to make the WDF World Championship for next year. He's got a lot of good oh, ranking you know. points, and I hope for the rest of the year he does very well. All the best to him and the rest of his family. 135. This is a better second leg from him. He's mentioned on a couple of occasions that he's looking oh, at maybe going to the British Open. Maybe some tournaments in Ireland. 180. Where has this been? Where has this been? This is a proper leg of darts. 52. On your corner, 101. No pressure on his shoulders here. For the man who has played in seven 53. UK Opens. Made his debut back in 2010. But he's never really been deep in a UK Open. That's the problem. 44. Ryan, you're 48. He's made the last 128 twice. Game's on the he second finds leg. exactly the same Ryan finish Murray. in exactly the same amount of darts in the leg as his opponent in the previous leg. 14 darts with a 48 finish. The leg is Ryan Furness to throw first. Game on. It's almost like they're twins. Let's have a Nine, little two, three. delve into the history books then. Where did Ryan Murray get to on his debut at the UK Open? Who beat him? Ah, good friend Jason Clark. I haven't heard from Jason in a while. I do believe Jason Clark. 60. He was a very good player in his day. Never had the privilege of playing against Jason. But what's going on here? 123. Yeah, he's just climbing to 111. Mystifying stuff. 100. One round further, the year after 
losing to Jason Clark. But then he lost out to Martin Turner, who is someone he probably knows a fair bit about because Martin's having a very good when season himself in the WDF. And that was after Ryan had beaten Colin Monk, which back in 2011 is a pretty good win. 45. The other time he made the last 128 of the UK Open was 2017. 140. And on that occasion, he lost to Andrew Gilding. That was after beating John Ferrell of East Sussex. John Ferrell, one of the more notable left-handers that has played in the PDC in history. Double 10 for Ryan. Oh, that one's a big miss. Ryan, you're required 90. He's got to get on his tiptoes to get that one. <laughs> We're at that point, are we? Where double Ryan, doubles you're 10. come in like 78 with double 19 in tops. Six. He's not showing his disappointment, Ryan, but he will feel 60. it in his gut. Double top. Four for S. Game show on the third. That's a nice take as well. Ryan Furness. It's not a 14 darter this time. It's not a 48 checkout either. But it is a 2 1 lead. Fourth leg is Ryan Murray to throw first. Game on. Nine, two, one. I do believe I'm right in thinking that Ryan Finesse has never been to a UK Open, but I'm going to double check it anyway. Eighty-five. No, he's never been to a UK Open, not yet. But maybe that's something he can shoot for over the next couple of years. One hundred and four. He's only been playing top-level darts for. A good couple of seasons. He played the Challenge Tour in Wigan in 2020. Oh, he had a few wins there. And he's gradually got better and better. And I think this vehicle at the Live League has given him a little source of confidence. 60. He's definitely got something. Just looking through his darts profile on one, one of my hundred. databases. One hundred and sixty-one. says that his walk-on song is Sweet Caroline. Please don't do this to us, Ryan. We hear that song way too much anyway. One hundred Think of five. something else. One hundred and twenty-seven. Let Daryl Gurney have it. Sixteen for tops for three. One. Eighty-seven. So be really close to winning this group. Tops it is. Game show on Tops the four gets. Play. He's Ryan been Fennett. super sharp on the double 16 and the double top so far today. And I don't see that changing. Fifth leg is Ryan Furness to throw first. Game on. Is it right that Ryan Furness's nickname is Puppy? How can he possibly be called Puppy in darts? Nine, oh, that's six. Right. Because somebody else has already got that. Someone who we work very closely with. George Noble. 59. Ryan was born back in 1993. And George Noble was already refereeing matches by then. Not that I'm trying to make you feel old, George. My apologies. But when you've got young stars coming into the game now, like Luke Littler, who was only 15 and was born in 2007. I mean, really? That was the year I was going to turn pro. 100. It's good to see, though. Great to see young stars coming through the ranks. 47. And I think Ryan Murray may have hit the wall. He's put up a valiant fight in this match, but as much as he's tried, nothing has worked. 42. Eighty-five. One hundred twenty-three points separate him 
from the gold medal position in Group C. Fifty-five running has a bit more work to do, given the opportunity. Give that every chance, but yet again, those oh, big twenty-eight gram barrels. Running record sixty-eight. Scuppered his chance of a big out. Double top. 28. Vanessa misses Ronnie this time. 72. Double 12. Game show and that was leg. silky smooth. Ryan Murray. As Ryan Murray says to me, I'm not done yet. Well done, Ryan. That was a great checkout in two darts. Six leg is Ryan Murray to throw first. Game on. It's a bit like having a bad round of golf. You still want to birdie the last. 130. To make sure that the journey home gives you a little bit of a smile. Fifty-seven. This is an immensely frustrating game. I am allowed to say that because I've played it for a very long 31. time. Thirty-one. But you, when you have a few days that don't go your way, the best thing to do is to take a couple of days off Aye, and just want? reassess when you get back on the board. If you're not a PDC professional, you are allowed to just go home and take stock and figure out what went wrong. As I don't know what the next port of call is for Ryan. You have to ask him. 140. The port of call after this might be leg seven. Because the Murray average is 95. He's not been putting in anything like this all week. 100. That was an aggressive last start because Finesse, if he'd have found a single, was on a bogey number. And he's had a look at 123 no before, score. Ryan. Ryan you require 123. Oh, boy. That's a sickener. That's the problem with those big stems and those big barrels. 47. And he's got to go all the way back to 98 again. Double 12. 86. So a chance for Finesse Ryan, you require 76. to win the group. He's already missed tops for it. Game but shot he doesn't on the miss double eight. Ryan and Finesse. Ryan Finesse of Salisbury wins Group C. And Josh Richardson can't do anything about it when he takes on Simon Stevenson in our final match coming next. There are the numbers. It's one of the better performances from Ryan Murray, funnily enough but he still loses by four legs to two. All the best to you, Ryan, as you make your way back to Scotland and all of your efforts over the next few months. I hope they are fruitful for you. We'll see you again, hopefully. We'll see Ryan Finesse on Saturday night. Josh Richardson and Simon Stevenson will close out our Group C action. That's coming up shortly. <laughs>
two more players for you in our final match of Group C. And Simon Stevenson will be feeling very disappointed that he can't do anything about his league position in this match. But Josh is safe. What can he do in our last match of the day? Simon Stevenson has now found himself in the bottom half. James with a decent day today. Getting six points from a possible ten. But Ryan Furness getting all ten points. Which means he tops the daily table as well as the overall one. Okay, first leg is Josh to throw first. Game on. And as far as Josh is concerned, he had a nice little breather between that Ryan Murray match in match 12 and now. 86. After he took 16 missed match darts on the chin before finally getting the 17th in the requisite bed. 59. But Simon's got to be really disappointed after topping yesterday's table. He's only come up with one win today. And it's very fair one of me to say that he probably shouldn't have won that one either. He pinched it at the very end. So a very disappointing set of affairs here for Simon, who will go back to Plymouth today. And we will hopefully see him a little bit more in the future. 145. It's been one of those weeks though, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but this is the right time to talk about it. Simon 80. had a bad Tuesday, a very good Wednesday, a very good Thursday, and a bad Friday. 105. come up just short on what has been, I'm sure, a very frustrating few days. 180. Joshua Rickwine, 65. And it will be tantamount to his week if this goes by Josh. 45. He does get a chance to Simon take this against the throw. 42. Double 16. Game shot on the first and a Very leg. good leg it is indeed. Simon Stevenson. 14 dart start, which is exactly what his dad got. Josh's dad, not Simon's dad, in his last game in match number 13. going to get Simon to throw first. Game on. And he went on to average 100.2 against Sam Kankett. 180. Is this going to be one of those performances where he says, you know what? I'm going to pay you back for knocking me out by taking you out in the best possible way. I'm going to ruin your confidence for Saturday by beating you to nil. Or is that just the way that I would think about it? 100. He never gives much away to Simon. But he is a somewhat silent assassin. Wednesday one. I always like it when the referees call scores like that a little bit more silent. One hundred and trying to make the player feel better by saying just twenty one instead of saying it a bit louder. But look at the scoring of Stevenson in the match so far. Eighty one. This is world class. Double 16 again. Game Look on the this. second leg. Simon He's Stevenson. only thrown 26 darts for the first two legs. That was a 14 darter. Then that 12 darter. What else have you got, Josh Simon? To throw first. Game on. This is how frustrating this game can be. <laughs> You'll be thinking, where was this earlier? 30. But the circumstances were different. His personal best in the live league is 101.9. So far, 60. He's a little bit above that. If he could set a personal best before he leaves this building, that would make him feel like he's taking a bit of consolation from today. 40. But you don't want consolation. 
you don't want to read on social media that you're 60. in the bottom half of the table. You want to see that tweet, that Facebook post, that Instagram video that says, Fools, I'm ain't. playing tomorrow night. There's going to be no bonus for Simon, but it could be bonus time for Josh tomorrow when he goes up against Ryan Finesse once again. Fools, he fine. And Matthew Dennett. The other three participants in the finals will be finalised later on tonight from 10pm. Hey, T3. We'll have a little preview for a few minutes before we go on the air. And then it will be up to Scott Marsh, Daryl Pilgrim, Paul Hogan, Kieran Tien and Andy Hamilton to see who comes out of that group. Marsh starts on zero points. And it pretty much he needs a miracle to get through that particular group. Fawlty. Pilgrim and Tien on four points. Hogan and Hamilton on six. It's all very tight. Do not miss that from 10 p.m. 60. on Sporty Stuff TV Live. Which require 160. That's the dart you don't want when you hit the first 60 on a 160 121. combo. 121, Simon, you record 136. First time Simon hasn't been threatening a 12 to 15 data. Oh, boy. Double eight. Oh, no he's busted. Score. Joshua Require, 39. That is so typical of his day. And you can see him looking to the heavens. That one stung a bit. Got to go high. And just as Simon you can see, after those misses, if Simon Stevenson had lost the previous visit by missing the double eight to the left, he would have had a shot with three darts. Ninety-six. Joshua Coyne, that bust shot really did hurt his chances of winning this one four legs to nil. Game shot on the third. It's now two legs Josh to one. Josh Richardson. Just goes to show, double eight is not an easy double because either side of it, you can bust it with singles and certain well, doubles. Simon to throw first. Game on. He's probably wishing he had hit a single 11 instead of a double 11. At least he would have left himself on five. 100. When they played the first match of this group, it was a victory for Simon. 140. Two. Averages were in the low 80s. That's pretty much where things have been in this group. 100. The overall average for yesterday's player was 83.92. There were 25 maximums hit, which is pretty good. 10 ton plus out, Holy. which again is pretty good. A high out of 145 hit by Josh. Some good stuff in there. But I have to be honest... The in-between stuff was pretty ordinary. 140. It's a bit like seeing someone hitting a maximum followed by 44. That's how the day was going. One well, that is a maximum. 180, so I mean, record they're both handily placed after nine. Sixty-five. Josh, record 141. Usually when you've hit a maximum to leave one four one, it's for a nine data. One hundred and lovely leave from Josh. Ninety six. He's gonna go for the sixty, I be I believe here, yeah, yeah. For double eight. And he Game finds it this Sean time. Four if only he Simon had found Stevenson. that on the one three six combination in the previous leg, that would have been the end of the match. That 96 check out. But maybe it I wouldn't have. Josh to throw first. Game on. You know how the ripple effect works. If leg three hadn't gone the way it had, then the likelihood is he wouldn't have left himself 96 there. 100. Anyway, let's move on. It's 3-1 Stevenson. 
And if he does win this match, he's not going to be in the bottom half. He's going to finish third in this table. Hey, is he fine? And he would finish third on 12 points. Finesse has finished on plus 17 in leg difference and 16 points, 16. which is exactly the same amount of points that Matthew Dennant found to win Group A. So their form, you would say, is on a par. Fine, he fine. We'll look at their statistics going into the final tomorrow night, just to pick the bones out of it. One hundred and one. It's a lovely pitch, that one. One hundred. A disappointing ton in the end. With that stunted follow through. And what's he going to do here? 24. Not enough by the looks of it. Another good turn there from Simon, which gives him a look at a match-winning shot. Eighty. Simon, you record one hundred and look at one three six again. It might not matter as the ball beckons and the Game ball is shot hit. The, match. the last Simon dart Stevenson. of this entire day in Group C is arguably one of the best. Look how good this bullseye is. What a beautiful thing. Take a photo of that and put it as your screensaver. 96.04, and without checking my notes, I think that's probably the best performance he's had all week. A really good performance from Simon Stevenson. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too late. 80% on the checkouts, and the only dart he missed at a double was a shot at double eight for a one three six combination, which he ended up busting. But there you see, Stevenson has finished in third position. Josh Richardson goes through to the finals in second position. And then Ryan Finesse has won the group on 16 points with an obliterating plus 17 in that leg difference. He was sublime today with 10, po 10 points from a possible 10. We're going to take a break over the next eight hours or so. But when we come back live on Sporty Stuff TV from 10 p.m., it will be the conclusion of Group B. We hope you can join us then. This is the Asset signing out for now. See you in about eight hours. Take care, everyone, and have a lovely Friday.